This next story is going to be very difficult for you guys to wrap your head around. We have two twin sisters, both paralyzed in the exact same car accident, both with two different levels of injury. One paralyzed from the neck down and one paralyzed from the waist down. Now, look, as we get into this story, I want you guys to understand that these stories are made up to get more views, even more likes, or even sell more books. These are life-changing events that people go through. This story that you guys are about to hear is a life-altering event that these women have gone through. And they didn't let that stop them. Both post up frequently on social media where they detail their life after SEI injury and the journey that they're going through to get back to, you know, just being themselves. So Ashley and Nikki, I just want to tell you thank you for allowing me to share you guys' story on my channel. And they also have a YouTube channel where they do different vlogs and, you know, they just show you guys just stuff in their life. So if you could, make sure you guys go check them out. All links will be down there in the description box below. Ashley and Nikki, thank you once again for allowing me to bring you guys a story to my channel. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. I hope you guys enjoy. What's up, what's up? How you doing? Hey, good. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How's everything going? Good, good, good. Okay. Had a weird experience, so... Huh? Sorry. Just trying to get out the sillies. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh no, no, no. Are you good? You good? You good? Here. What's up? What's up? How you doing? You didn't okay. know exactly what you wanted, so I was like, I'm just gonna. She could be here. Okay. So okay. I mean, uh, we can go ahead and talk about it. All right. So, would y'all like to do it with you know each individual? Uh, like I speak to each one of y'all, and then like we can kind of do like a. I said like a like a big collab, you know, like for like a separate video too, so we can get like three videos out of it, or we could do y'all both together. It's up to y'all. We were saying we were talking. We think separate because we did, we were talking about like we were we were trying to remember before we got on this call with you. Like, damn, that's trying to really dig into the story. Yeah, <laughs> we do have really different experiences. Like, I mean, okay. she had a trach and she said she had. I feel like she had definitely way more trauma and shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and okay. Uh, she had a way longer hospital stay than me as well, so okay, it's like a different experience. Exactly. Huh? Yeah, you did. I feel like I even just this hospital experience alone is different. Mm hmm. Similar. And and also that's what I was thinking too, um, because both y'all are twins, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So yes, y'all are twins, and I think that I really think that people would probably. Just kind of like put y'all in like the same bubble as far as like oh oh they twins they they went through the same exact thing. Yeah, we and, get a lot of people think we have the same. Um, yeah, history. and everyone's yeah. why we're in different chairs sometimes. Like, mm hmm, mm hmm. So I definitely noticed that, and that's really what I wanted to do. The only reason why I asked y'all was because at the same time y'all are twins, so y'all would probably want to do everything together. So it was something that I figured that you know I would definitely leave up to y'all. But I, I'm definitely down to uh, do a separate though. Let's do it. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Do some stuff. I guess you're kicking me out. Sorry. I'll go first. <laughs> you could say okay. it. You could listen. Okay. Just yeah, it's fine. It's fine. You're out of my space. So. <laughs> do y'all bicker a lot? Um, Like, our parents say we bicker like an old, like old couple, which we do. <laughs> okay. Okay, do y'all live together? He says I'm bossy. <laughs> All right. You always say I'm boss. <laughs> Who's older? She is by three oh, minutes. Oh, by three minutes? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's by what's three, up. My mom says three long minutes. Three long minutes. All right. Mm -hmm. That's what's up. That's what's up. Okay. Yeah. So, so you're the younger sister, and your name is Nicole, correct? Yeah, Nicole. And Nikki. Okay. Yeah. Nicole, and Nikki. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I always I feel like after my accident, I go by mm -hmm. Nikki a lot because I feel like Nicole's dead. <laughs> you wanna know what? Not that I have a different name, but I, I kind of feel the same way. I feel like the old me is dead and it's just like this is a whole new like rebirth, you know. So Yeah, it's like a whole different mm. person. Exactly, exactly. Like sometimes I think to myself, like, was that even real? Like it cause you know, for me it's been almost 10 years, so it's just like it's really I, I don't know. I feel like I'm losing it. You know, so yeah, like I don't know. R.I.P. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you wanna know what? I know a lot of people that feel that way too. So, <sighs> okay, yeah. all right, okay. So, you know, starting off, 
just go ahead and tell us a little bit about you. Um, like how was how was Nicole before her accident? Okay, so Nicole before her accident. Yeah. Um, she was what's the name of the thing? She I was a teacher and a bartender. I'm like, where do you go? It's like people are so multi dimensional. But <laughs> I was a teacher okay. and a bartender. <laughs> um I did bartending mm-hmm. throughout college, so I do have my degree okay. in early childhood education. Um, okay. But I also did teaching. I worked a lot. Like, I was always working. I was the type of person, like, oh, she's working two jobs. Like, mm-hmm. even when I was in school, I was working. I was working at another, like, another club. I was just always working. I was always busy. I also was a party girl. I really liked to party. Yeah. Uh, I did a lot of um, mm-hmm. social. I was out with, like, friends or coworkers or um, co- okay. classmates. Like, honestly, whoever just hit me up, mm-hmm. I was probably there. I was also, like... It's like funny, I was a party girl, but I was also like a little bit of a nerd because I never went partying unless all my homework was done. <laughs> Over. <laughs> okay. Homework. Um, I and I made sure all my homework was finished Thursday night so I could have the whole weekend party. <laughs> like <laughs> Okay. It's funny to look back. I'm like, people have asked me how did I do college with with um the way that I was out a lot because I used mm-hmm. to post on Snapchat a lot. People would yeah. always see me out. <laughs> so I would be um that was kind of me. Um, I also li- I lived at home for a little bit, but I had just moved out mm. a year before the accident happened. Like literally okay. a year before the accident happened. Okay. Maybe like seven months before the accident. Mm-hmm. And um, so I was living on my own. It was fun. I was in Chicago, like experiencing the Chicago life. Okay. Um, and then before my accident, I also started had working out. I was I felt like I was mm. going on a transition before my accident. Mm-hmm. I actually had deleted like all my on instagram because i was like i'm gonna work out i'm gonna start showing like my workout journey and mm. just like get my work on my diet and all of that and then but then our accident happened so that was kind of okay. like me before the accident yeah okay yeah. how old are you I mean, if you don't mind me asking i'm seven i'll be 20 days in june okay okay mm-hmm. and what's your level of injury yeah I'm a T6, but I went to the doctor like a couple weeks ago and they told me that I like have feeling like a T10, which I was kind of interesting. I don't know if I believe it so much, but mm. you know, the num- I always say the number is like the number. Okay. I know I can't feel like mm. right by like my belly button down. So that's exactly you, that's exactly where I'm at. So I'm T10, T11. So I'm like right there, like at the at the bottom of my belly button. Like and it just it's like a like a little squiggly line going around my body from there, so. That's, okay. That's okay. Me. So. so then maybe maybe you might be like a T ten. Yeah. yeah. So you might be a T ten T eleven. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. Is T six is T six more up or is it more down? It's more up. Oh 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 yeah. nah! If you're feeling at the belly button down, then I mean yeah, T six I guess for, would be like right here, like right below. Yeah. Me. But mm-hmm. yeah, I guess I do. I don't know because I do feel okay. like lower than that. So okay. But in the hospital, like at rehab hospital, they told me T six, and when oh. I went to the doctor just two weeks ago, he was like, "I think you have sensation like a T ten. Okay. And I was like, "My," eyes and I was like, "Okay." <laughs> do you got good core strength? Um. Yes and no. Like I, I call it the okay. wobbles. I do have the wobbles okay. from time to time. But mm-hmm. I also broke my ribs in my accident and oh, my sternum, okay. and I had a neck surgery too. So okay. I always feel like that also plays a role in like how I move. Oh, um, okay. Which makes me look because I have a lot of pain on my right side. It makes me um, mm-hmm. sometimes I feel like okay. I favor one side. So I have the mm-hmm. wobble, but I'm pretty like pretty can stay pretty balanced. I okay. Would say. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, um, did you know anybody that was in a wheelchair prior to your accident? Not anyone like with spinal cord injury. My little cousin mm-hmm. has cerebral palsy, mm-hmm. so I knew that. But that was is more his is like extreme yeah. case of it. So mm-hmm. I knew of I knew of disabilities, but I guess I yeah. never even asked like his mom questions or mm-hmm. like it just didn't like it was like he was like that since he was born. So it was kind of like yeah. And my grandma before she passed, she was blind, but I never saw that uh-huh. as a disability. So yeah. I guess no one in he is in wheelchair, but it was like no one in wheelchairs like. Like you and mm-hmm. I. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, before your SEI injury, what was your, 
what was your perception of people that was in wheelchairs? If you need help, I can give you my perception. Yeah, give me yours, but I think I thought all of them were sick. <laughs> oh, okay. And you wanna know what? I, I and you wanna know what? There's nothing wrong with that because if if we're not really aware, then we're probably gonna think the worst. So, you know, and, and you only get to realize after your SCI injury because now you're pretty much like like, you know, this is your life. So it's like, you know, now mm-hmm. now that you're more aware, you like, oh man, like the way I thought before, it's just I didn't I just really didn't I wasn't aware of of what an SCI injury was, but you know, I, you know, I, 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 my uncle was paralyzed. So I only kind of really went off of what I saw, you know, so it wasn't the best stuff, you know, it wasn't the best stuff. So that was my perception of people that was in wheelchairs. And, and honestly it was all wrong because in reality, that's just his situation. Not everybody's situation is the same, you know, and you know, that's pretty much it. So okay, okay, that makes sense. That's that's crazy to get someone who was paralyzed in your family. Mm-hmm. What's crazy is for ours. Um, I we had a cousin after our accident who got injured. Okay. Oh, for real? Crazy. Yeah, she was able to oh. see us like that, and then she got injured, mm. which is that's crazy. crazy. But yeah, before that, no. Crazy. And then too, like in high school, I always just remember people in wheelchairs. I don't know what mm-hmm. their abilities were, but they were always separated. I didn't have mm. any anybody in a wheelchair in my classes or and I was in a big yeah. school you think one of a wheelchair mm-hmm. would have been in the, but they always were separated like in a different even a whole different hallway yeah, so I was like wanna... oh they're sick like they must yeah. be sick dang um, that's crazy I never thought about it like that like even at my high school like I didn't have the biggest high school but I went to two different high schools and the one I went to before was big and in either high school I don't remember anybody being in a wheelchair so. okay okay yeah, so and I remember like, seeing the wheelchairs, but they always had someone with them. Mm-hmm. They always were separated. They didn't really mm-hmm. interact with yeah. us, and I always just thought, I guess I just assumed like, oh, they must be like, I don't know. I just assumed sick. Mm-hmm. That was like right, and now I hate when people think that I'm sick. Yeah, and you want to know what? <laughs> like, I would say because you know you don't really have that many people, or I'm not really aware of that many people that get paralyzed young. So I believe that, you know, that's you know, not that it's a little rare, but the people who you are, the people who you might see in like elementary school, middle school, high school, those are going to be the people that is most likely like, I would say born with like, you know, spinal bifida or like cerebral palsy and stuff like that. So, you know, but again, it's just that we're really just not aware of, you know, really what's out there because, you know, you learn that as you go along, you know, in life, you know, like, I don't know, like. I really That's really think just my perception. In class, mm-hmm. they should teach. Or they should add disabilities. I mean, I was a teacher, so I saw <laughs> curriculum and all that. We teach differences, mm-hmm. like okay. in race and religion, all that. But we never taught about disability. Yeah. So okay. I, I understand why nobody knows about that. Like, mm-hmm. why, why would they? If we don't yeah. even teach it or share mm-hmm. it, like, they, we exist. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. And you said you were a teacher. What grade did you teach? preschool what okay okay getting them young getting them young that's what's up that's mm-hmm. what's up I okay loved, before i was a preschool i did do infants for a while okay but, and i would have loved to say i did love infants and people say that's not teaching but you know we do sign language with them and stuff and i used to love that mm-hmm. but um i said i was too qualified once i graduated to be staying in the infant room but oh. babies i love the young ones like four and mm-hmm. younger like, that's where I, they oh. grab my heart <laughs> okay okay now mm-hmm. you said you was 27 right now and you you didn't say but i read this on you on on y'all's page that y'all got paralyzed in 2019 yes yes mm-hmm. okay damn so that's in March. Yeah. so it just hit three years just hit three years Mm-hmm. okay March. okay now yeah. okay now now tell me about that day how was that day going for you? The day for me was um, what? Did, so I worked at the bar, like I had said. So I had, mm-hmm. it was St. Patty's Day. Our accident was on St. Patty's Day, so mm-hmm. that's like the backstory. So I had yeah. worked at the the bar the night before because Chicago has a big mm-hmm. parade here, mm-hmm. and I mean money day for bartenders yeah. like all around Chicago. 
So mm-hmm. um, the next day was actually St. Patty's Day, but they always do it on the Saturday, so I was a Sunday. Mm-hmm. And uh, like I said, I was I, like on this workout journey and eating healthy, so I was actually I lived at home, and I was like, come. I was like, let's um go out to eat. Like I had a long week. I was like, let's just go get mm-hmm. some something to eat. But first, I'm gonna go to the gym and I'm gonna get my nails done. Mm-hmm. So I went to go do that, and what's crazy, and I I'm happy you asked this because I went. I never went swimming at the gym. And this mm-hmm. day, for some reason, I brought my swimsuit and I went swimming. Mm-hmm. Not, and like thinking back, I'm like, did like something was telling me like that was gonna be my last time swimming with my full body because I love swimming and it was winter, mm-hmm. it was freezing. Like, why did I get yeah. in the pool? I still never understand that. But I did. I was like, I'm just going to get in the pool. I even technically said, I'm going to take a little longer because I'm actually going to go swimming after my workout. Mm-hmm. And I just find that crazy. And then we ended up meeting up, came here. She was dragging to get ready. <laughs> and so I was just waiting, sitting on her bed, like, come on, mm-hmm. hurry up. This is taking forever. <laughs> and then that, the rest after that is history. I'll be honest, I can't really talk too much on the day okay. after that. I have to like speed over it because legal issues until I can't wait until oh. I'm able to share everything. Okay. But, um, I okay. can say that we there was an accident and um, was the accident and the driver it was someone that I knew and he ran away from the accident. Mm-hmm. So. Okay, so you so you and your sister were both passengers in the vehicle, correct? Yeah, we were in the back seat. Okay. We were ejected. Like I, I guess I was the one that broke the uh, what's it called, the windshield because okay. I had all the Ooh. like scratches on my face and stuff. And like Ash, my sister Ashley, she was literally just broke her neck. Like she always says, like I just broke my neck. I mean, it's a big injury, but yeah. she literally just broke her neck. I looked like you could tell I was in an accident. Like I looked tore up. I still have like scars on my body from not even just surgeries and stuff, just from like being okay. torn up and thrown around. Okay. Okay. Now, since there's an ongoing legal issue, then I'll try to, I'll try to ask the question as best as possible. And if you don't want to answer it, just say you don't want to. And then we go to the next question. Um, it is kind of the only um, limit I have. Yeah. You said what? Say it again. I really just can't talk about, about the, the, date, the, the accident itself. Okay. But okay. Okay. If you have all that, okay. That's my story to tell. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now. Okay. So we. Okay. Let me see. Hmm. Okay. So at the time of the accident, you said you went through the windshield, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, are you able to answer where you were sitting at inside the vehicle? Um, I was sitting in the middle. Okay. The, you were in okay. The car. Mm-hmm. Okay, so is this the is this the middle in the back, correct? Yeah, the middle in the back because okay. um, it was all my friends. Okay, like, Ashley had just moved back here, so mm-hmm. I, I was sitting in the middle, and there was a, my my friend and then Ashley. Okay, um, with because she didn't know really know anybody like like that. Okay, like, they weren't now. Friends. Okay, now is Ashley on the right or the left of you? That's a good question. I think she was on. I think she was on the left, if I'm not mistaken. She was on the left? Okay, yeah. so, I mean, obviously, obviously I can kind of see why you went through the windshield because when you're in the middle of the back seat, it's, there's just open space right there. All it is is probably the little armrest, but what's straight in front of you is the windshield. And, yep. I mean, and I wasn't wearing a seatbelt, so... I was going to ask you that, but I thought about it and I was like, you know what? Let me not ask her that because it could have just been, but you answered. The crazy is, is I never wore a seat. I mean, I took Ubers all the time in Chicago Yeah, and I would go in the back seat of Ubers all the time and never would put on my seatbelt in the back. And now okay. I'm like, telling people like, put on your seatbelt in the back. Yeah. yeah. You <laughs> know what? That's something that I, I always learn. Like, like, like I always like, no matter what, put on my seatbelt. Like it feels weird. Is I, I guess it feels weird. And then also at the same time, all my cars, if you don't put on your seatbelt, it beeps loud as hell. So, but I mean, I've always put on my seatbelt though. Um, I guess, I don't know. I guess I was just always just cautious. It's just like, I don't know. Like, I guess, I I guess I think, no, but, but it's stressful too at the same time. Cause I feel like I think about dying every day, even before my accident. Like, and maybe that's because I really just, what happened? That's horrible. 
Not that I th- not that no, no, no. I don't want you to think that I think about dying. Like I like like I just be scared if I die. Like I I just don't be wanting to die. Like um Okay. And, yeah, so I always took those like little precautions like to where it's just like, you know what? If I if putting on my seatbelt can save my life and better my chances, I'm wearing my seatbelt. Type, you know what I mean? So I try to stay out of planes as much as possible. <laughs> people injured who were wearing their seatbelt. So sometimes yeah. I'm like... Yeah. Yeah, true. Okay. <laughs> oh. Okay, so was your sister... Okay, so you say that your sister was thrown from the vehicle too, correct? She, I guess, followed me. She, Damn. I guess, followed okay, now, me. How many people was in the backseat? Was it three people three in the backseat or four? Yeah, there's three, three of us. So, right... Okay, so the impact just must have been just, uh, just crazy yeah, to and where was, everyone else was okay, like they were fine. Like, okay, um, okay. Now, from the time you get ejected from the vehicle, what's the next thing that you remember? The next thing I remember, even my dad will say this isn't true, but I remember him. I remember so like, it must have been after my spinal surgery, and I was in ICU, and I just remember asking my like happened and he was like you've been in a really bad accident he swears that didn't happen but he Mm -hmm. was probably going through it so i don't even remember but Mm -hmm. i remember just like like um first wondering like what happened because i was in a hospital and that's weird you wake up in a hospital and then i also was wondering where the hell my sister was Mm -hmm. like where where is ashley like i knew she was with me i mean i knew other people were with me and i know it's bad to say but i wasn't in my head, I guess I wasn't thinking of them. I was only like thinking of my sister. <laughs> like, as like, most pe- as she? most people would, as most people would. It sounds. I feel like it sounds so bad to be like, oh, I was only really kind of thinking of my sister. But I really was like, where is she? I even I remember asking my dad, and it was like it was like I was getting weird vibes from him. Like he wasn't telling yeah. me, and I. But like I said, I had the neck surgery as well, but I didn't okay. have that till a week later, and mm-hmm. I hadn't seen Ashley for a whole like four days and then they were telling me oh we missed something you have you need another surgery and I was like okay and I refused to go to my next surgery until they let me see Ashley because I swore I told my dad like you guys are she's she's dead you just want me to fight if she's dead I'm not fighting no more like I was like no I'm not going to the second surgery if she's not alive and they literally like how are you supposed to do this and I'm not thinking I didn't know I was paralyzed I didn't hit me yet but I just, they put me on this like yeah. big, like it was like a wood board. They strapped mm-hmm. me. I said, okay, it's going to hurt a little. I said, okay, okay. But as long as I can see my sister. And they rolled me to her room before my, right before my surgery because I literally was refusing to go into the surgery. I wouldn't sign the paper. Yeah. I was like, I'm not doing that until I get to see my sister. I want to just see that she's breathing and that she's there. Yeah. 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 And she uh, was, mm. and that was you probably see you've probably seen the video. There's a video where when we first saw each other, because I think uh, my family in the room got a video, and you could see me on the big thing, all strapped okay. up and stuff. Okay. And I'll put it up like if you allow me to. Can I put it up on the video right yeah, now? Yeah. Do you guys a couple minutes by yourselves? Yeah. Why don't we all start? And it's like, it was, I saw her breathing and I said, okay, I'll, let's go to surgery. 
Okay. <laughs> Let's All do right. the second surgery. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, now, I know you said that, you know, when you woke up that it just probably just really, like, it wasn't registering to you that you was paralyzed, right? For me, it was the same way, all right? Is, I just wasn't, I, I, I guess I was just so happy to be alive that I really didn't really kind of question it, but once I seen them just keep coming in the room and just doing little things, you know, I, I, and I'm just realizing that I can't feel my legs and. I feel like it was up on it was on me to put two and two together, you know. My pa- I feel like my parents knew, but they didn't really tell me. Nobody really said anything to me. It was just, it was just it kind of it. It was what it was. For for me, it wasn't until I got to rehab that I finally mm-hmm. like realized like, oh shit, I'm paralyzed. Like, <laughs> yeah. this is paralysis. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, now, like, oh, so no one told me anything. Mm-hmm. Like it was just. like, you were in a really bad car accident and you have to be in the hospital. So I'm just like, okay, like, okay, like Mm -hmm. work on me, fix me up. Like what you got to do. Okay. Now you said you had to get neck surgery. Can you say what your injuries were? Yeah. Yeah. So it was the, the spine surgery. Um, I had like a bulging disc, like my neck was displaced, I guess. So they had to like realign it, I guess, something like that. Okay. And then I also broke my sternum. Mm-hmm. So this like bone right here. And yeah. then um, the 10 to like 12 ribs on my right side. Um, which was like that. I feel like that was more, more painful than the spine. Yeah. Surgery. Like the spine. <laughs> the ribs yeah. were not it. Yeah. yeah. At all. Rib, I was the, in the, the ribs are something serious. Mm -hmm. I had a great nurse who like he wrapped me in a cocoon because I hated Mm -hmm. laying on that side and it would turn me I was like no don't do that Mm -hmm. and she like would wrap me in a cocoon and be like okay Mm -hmm. just go to sleep like that like I felt like a little baby yeah like she was so yeah I felt like (laughs) I felt like trying to get some rest in those hospital beds once you wake up is so uncomfortable because you you want so much pain, so it's like you got to sleep a weird way, and then like you know, like just everything that's going on, all the machines making noises, you know, you being in a hospital, like it's it's a weird atmosphere, you know. And I'm pretty sure you're you're used to like sleeping on your stomach and stuff like that, you know, just being able to roll over and you can't, you know, it's yeah. it sucks, you know. So because I like, could you I like I couldn't move at all. You could you move at all when you were first. You can't um, really move. Like you're like yeah, yeah. My house was minimal because I had a trach in, so that trach really like it. I couldn't move too far because the little thing was always popping out. Oh, ouch! Okay. Yeah. Well, it wasn't. It wasn't. It didn't hurt. It's just I couldn't breathe. Like so, it's like the little yeah. tube that like they got the little piece that's around your neck, and then like that's connected to it, and I think that's what's giving you the the oxygen to breathe and like it was just always just popping out so it oh, sucked i yeah. had uh, something down my like in my mouth down my throat but it was only for mm-hmm. like a few days and okay. then they took it out okay and i was okay, now- on my own oh okay okay now did you have the tube beam up whenever you woke up yes oh like i remember the tube in my mouth um mm-hmm. i actually <laughs> my dad told me a story that <laughs> I made a resident doctor cry because I told him that he was, I was drugged up. I don't remember this stuff, mm-hmm. but I told him like, you're trying to torture me, get this out of me. And mm-hmm. I wrote it on a paper because I was mad and I shoved it in his face because they kept telling me they were going to take it out. And then they'd be yeah. like, "Never mind, No, no, no. She can't have it out yet. So it was like mm-hmm. these back and forth all the time. And I was like getting frustrated. Yeah. Like you keep telling me I'm going to get this out. And then you don't take it out of me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not thinking now- now, I know why they did that, but yeah. then I was like, Mm-hmm. Take this out of now, me. Now, at the time, at the time when you wake up, do you have a feeding tube in? That's a good question. I don't think. I mean, I had so many things hooked up to me, but I don't think mm-hmm. I had a feeding tube. I was, okay. um, I was drinking at first, so like all liquids. Like my food was. Oh, okay. Solid. Okay. Um, like all right then. A lot okay, of yeah, insurance and stuff like that. Yes, no solid foods. I do remember that. So I can't remember if I had a feeding tube. If I did. I was so mm. drugged up. I had the, I had a I had a um like an IV in me that just mm-hmm. fed me drugs. 
because I was in so That's much pain. Cra- That's crazy. I feel like everybody was hooked up to the, the thing. I ain't get. I ain't get to experience that. You know, I ain't get one of those. But okay, okay. Now, when when they go into do the spinal surgery, what are they doing? Like, what are they fixing? For me, I guess my like I went to a doctor two weeks ago, so I kind of know what's fresh in my head. It was mm-hmm. like two. It was like my T six and T seven was like I guess like got away from each other. Mm, okay, but um, also. I was like so beat up in the accident mm-hmm. that my rod goes all the way like from my top like bef- it's higher than T6. It's probably mm-hmm. like all the way down. Yeah. Like I sometimes feel like I could feel it inside. Of me. Mm-hmm. I can't feel it inside. Of me. And there's yeah. two of them. So um they also said there were like other little pieces that were kind of like you could tell that were like hit wrong but it didn't make mm-hmm. mess with like my injury at all. It was just like okay. damage to the Mm -hmm. so yeah okay that's kind of that injury there and then i had this this one was probably the sternum and the ribs are probably the worst because the sternum really pushed my recovery back because i couldn't do anything Mm. they didn't want me lifting my arms they didn't want me putting my they couldn't do my hair i couldn't Mm. like go like this and like i really had to stay like this i had a neck brace on which most Mm. paras at least that i've met don't really have the neck at least lower level pairs have the neck brace mm-hmm. and it i was in that i mean i had to recover for like eight weeks okay so I even do any type of any type of therapy movement oh. i was able to do that like i started ot but even in ot i was limited to this motion mm-hmm. i couldn't go above my head i couldn't go reaching mm-hmm. down like yeah I, I always feel like just like once I realized I had a spinal cord injury, I was like, oh, I just want this to heal already so I could start doing therapy. Yeah. Like, I felt like it was slowing down the process so much. Mm-hmm. Okay, now you it said is. that it halted, like, everything that you could do for eight weeks. Now, was you in the ICU for those eight weeks? No, I was on, I was in ICU for, like, a week and a half, maybe two weeks. Okay. Um, well, I was in ICU for like about a week and a half, and then they moved me to mm-hmm. uh, another floor just to monitor me, make sure that I was ready to go to rehab, okay. and make sure there was a room ready at rehab. I guess they mm-hmm. were filled, so mm-hmm. I was just in the room. Fi- that was finally when I was able to like get my. I mean, his big beautiful curls. They were nappy. <laughs> Nobody okay. was taking care of them, <laughs> and <Yeah. laughs> I finally was able to there, like deep conditioned. I felt so good. I finally felt clean when I moved out of ICU. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I know they give you the bed baths and stuff, but I don't know. It was yeah, like so- a different level of clean when I went to the other room. I was yeah. like, clean me up, make me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, I was the same way. Um, of course, you do get the bed baths, and you know, yeah, I think about. I was in. They had me in a deuce coma for three weeks, so that's three yeah. weeks to get. That's three weeks of getting bed baths. Um, and then when I wake up, I'm in the ICU for a little while. So I was getting bed baths for a little while. So it was horrible. I, I never had facial hair before my accident. I did have facial hair, but, you know, I was in the Air Force, so I had to shave every day pretty much. Okay, okay. So I never really – and then, like, at that time I was young, so I really didn't have any facial hair really growing, except my mustache. So I wake up and I got a little beard growing. You know, it's patchy, though. And my hair is super long. Um, it's, I stink. You know, it was it was horrible. It was it was horrible. But, but when I finally got to shower, it was just like, man, I'm gonna do this every single day, <laughs> and I shower every day because of when it. When you first showered, were you in like a bed, like shower thing? No, no uh, um, it was it was a uh, uh, it was. I finally got to do it. I they finally got a shower chair up to my room, and it was like a full full on shower chair, like an actual chair that was a shower chair, and I got to get on that and going to the shower and it was i don't know it was i, I don't know, it was everything to me at the time it just it, i don't know it just was that is that is those would be the best when you finally get to shower after yes <laughs> yeah. doing the bed baths for me when i yeah. first showered, they had like i i did it in like a first real shower and rehab house they had like a bed mm-hmm. like device thing so i was still laying okay. down because when i would sit up i was so dizzy but i was able mm-hmm. to shower they were like do you want to shower laying down yes Put me in that so what was it? Was it like a little? I don't know. Is it like a little handheld thing? Like like I don't know. What does it look like? 
It was no, it was an actual like bed that you. So I didn't. It wasn't the hospital bed. They put me in another thing. Oh. That I was like okay. laying down, and it had sides. It was kind of like a crib. Okay, like, like a, a little pool. Like a little crib. pool. Okay. Yeah, like a little pool, but it had okay. legs, so they could push me. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. but I was laying down. It had no back either to like sit up. It was literally mm-hmm. just to lay down. Mm-hmm. Or I guess people like me who couldn't sit up. Okay. Uh, did you get hot water? Yes, it felt so so beautiful. For real? For real? Okay. okay. Right, <laughs> I loved yeah. when I showered. Um, <laughs> actually, the so the one of the girls that was in the accident with me, mm-hmm. she um helped me with my first shower. And I'll never forget that because I was I was like, can you please? Because like the, they had the the nurses and stuff. I was like, can you please shower mm-hmm. me? Like I feel like you'll do it better. Mm-hmm. Like. You'll make me feel, and she did. Like she got it all up and everything, and I was like, "Thank you." Like it felt so good. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot, you know. It's a lot more. It's a lot more personal. It's a lot more intimate when it's coming from a loved one. You know what I mean? It's it's like you know, like the nurses and stuff like that. It's it's like you know, at the same time you feel a little weird, and then you know, you're just another patient to them. You know, so it's just yeah. like, you know, they're okay. I got three, I got three bed baths to do today. I mean, you know, try to knock them out. So they ain't, it's not, it's not the same. So it's definitely, it's definitely understandable that, you know, it was, you'll never forget that. Cause mm-hmm. I'll never forget the shitty bed baths I got with the little foam. <laughs> you know, they put the little foam on you, you wipe it off. I'm like, it's, a little, it's weird. It's weird. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so it is okay. super weird. It is, it is. Okay. So, at what point do you start therapy? Oh, well, so I started therapy right when I moved, like, the two weeks after that, like, mm-hmm. hospital day. Okay. Um, But, uh, like, it was very, it was um, not, like, I guess not, like, it wasn't intense therapy. Like I, said, I, had I was about to say, okay. Precautions. Mm-hmm. When I was in therapy, when I was mm-hmm. in rehab, they call them your they used to always say sternum precautions. Okay. Like, you can't do this because your sternum precautions. I hated that word. <laughs> okay. Okay. So it just really wasn't intense. All right. It was. No, it, was like, it was just like, minimal like, stuff. Gripping stuff because you know you mm-hmm. were in the hospital and you get weak. It was like okay. grip, gripping things. Like, mm-hmm. um, I think at one point we went to the sink and I just leaned forward, but it, again I couldn't do anything at the sink because I couldn't have my hands above. Okay. So. Just like little, they were like being creative with it. I was happy I was Mm -hmm. able to go to rehab because I did have the option to stay in the hospital until I healed. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to do that. I, I, at that, when I had actually moved to the second room in Mm -hmm. ICU, like the upstairs room, like the not ICU. Yeah. I don't know what it would be called. (laughs) They, uh, I I started to, I got my phone back and I started to research. Okay. I found people on like you. I found you walk Mm -hmm. by glide on Instagram. And I was like, wait a minute, like, I gotta, I gotta work. We can't be being yeah. up here anymore. <laughs> like, we gotta For get real? to work. Get me out of here. So, mm-hmm. um, I was blessed with that because I, w- I was scared that they were going to keep me there and I was just going to be laying down. Like, what good was that going to do for me? So mm-hmm. at least I, I felt like at least I was able to sit in a chair. I was able to start working on like the grabbing stuff. And it seemed mm-hmm. silly at the time but like looking back i needed that therapy and exactly. they me there mm-hmm. which was nice like i hadn't had my leg stretch i finally realized that i was paralyzed when i was in the hospital mm-hmm. in rehab hospital mm-hmm. so i uh, yeah that was kind of like the way okay. they did my therapy. they were they were creative with it like pt i okay. couldn't even transfer in pt because i couldn't lift myself up mm. they well i could but they didn't want me to yeah um, so they were creative with everything. Like P, a lot of mm-hmm. PT was like stretching, and and then sometimes it was even like educational PT. Like, like mm-hmm. we'll teach you about this, or do you have questions? Yeah. That's actually a lot of my PT sessions. We were stalking people on Instagram, and For real? <laughs> until I was healed, like because okay. I couldn't do anything. She that she was a, my I love my therapist at rehab. I love mm-hmm. all my therapists at rehab hospital, and they were just like they. I think they saw that I didn't. I knew that there was a future mm-hmm. with this and they saw that also I was kind of discouraged that I couldn't do yeah. anything. Mm-hmm. So they were just trying to show, like make sure that I didn't, my, I guess my light didn't dim because mm-hmm. it would get depressing. Like, man, I could do this, but they don't want me to. Yeah. Like, 
I want to do this. Like, even I wanted to play with my makeup ones. I was like, can I do but I couldn't even, like, lift my hands to my face. They didn't yeah. want me doing that. So I was like, oh, this is so frustrating. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, okay, they so- would see me sometimes getting down on myself. Like, fuck. Yeah. No. Oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. Trust me. Um, I understand. All right. You're actually talking to somebody who's in the wheelchair too. So I definitely understand. I understand what you was going through at the time, like as far as like therapy wise and, you know, wanting to do stuff and just, you know, I, trust me, I understand. All right. Now, but I am curious because uh, you said you were a T10. You said you were a T10. Um, and you said that you didn't have the best hand movement once you woke up. Right, because you said you had, you was doing little things with your hands. Yes. Okay. Um, now, I'm oh, sorry about that. I guess I should explain that better. I when yeah. I when my accident, I don't yeah. know if you've heard heard or if this happened to you too. I feel like I'm actually maybe I should talk about this publicly more. But I I was like swollen, like water retention was all in mm-hmm. my body. Yeah. Like my body tried to protect itself, so there was like I was legit swollen. Like you could see my like hand like this. But then there was like a water mm-hmm. bubble all around everything, like, mm. like as if like someone just hugged me with water, and my body was being protected. So mm. I guess with whatever happened with that, like all around me, it just kind of like made me really weak. So even like okay. going like this felt like a chore. Like, yeah, ooh, that's kind of hard. Even when I would go on my phone, I'd put it down because it was like heavy. Mm-hmm. So, damn really- that. That's you don't know what's so crazy is I never thought about that till right now, but I didn't have the best hand movement when I woke up and it was a little hard to do things and both of my pinkies were numb. So like I couldn't like it was like I couldn't feel both of my pinkies. And like now that I think about it, I did have to work on grabbing stuff. And I, I, I don't know, it's it's crazy. I I never thought about that till right now. So, yeah, it's like no, you don't yeah. have like paralysis in your hands, but yeah. Um it's like you I don't know, you get weak. Just like yeah, laying you in do. bed and mm-hmm. it's kind of crazy. You don't realize, like, we do work out our hands every day when we're moving them and doing stuff. Yeah. You're just laying yeah. in a bed, not doing anything. Mm-hmm. That muscle's not working anymore, so it's weak. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I lost so much. I lost so much muscle mass just being in a coma for three weeks. You know, when I woke up, I was literally 100 pounds lighter. It was, you know, yes. It was That's crazy. crazy. That's yes. Amazing. It's crazy. Um yeah it's it was crazy because i it was like i mean i wasn't i wasn't like overweight because i had to be in shape for the military but it was like i woke up skinny like super skinny and then but remember but 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 then at the same time i really didn't eat right for like two years like it it was like the long yes it didn't like like i try to tell people like uh, like the reason why i created a youtube channel about weed was because weed is what really helped me get back to being me like i was able to i was able to you know get my i would not sleep it helped me with sleep i would not eat it took me a while but after smoking it was like i constantly started getting my appetite back and you know instead of throwing it up i was keeping it down a little bit by a little bit and it helped with anxiety depression and you know i still do it to this day i I might not feel myself as much doing it you know anymore because my channel got deleted but you know, it was one thing that I became real passionate about because at first when I was, you know, doing it occasionally in high school, it was, you know, like, this is, you know, like, I don't know, like, I, I, I we just smoking weed, but I had to actually do it for the medical purposes, I, it just means so much. Like, it's different. It, it hits different. You're right about that. You're right. It hits different. Because I, I was a smoker too. Mm hmm. But like now smoking just hits different. Like mm-hmm. you see, I wasn't I wasn't a big smoker. I, I, I smoked occasionally, but I really didn't care for it. Like I really didn't like it. And then like I didn't smoke either because I was in the I was in the military, so I couldn't smoke. But you know, once once like at first I just didn't like it, but then after I used it and really got the benefits from it that you know you most people just hear about, you know, is uh, like you said, it hits different. <laughs> It does. It does. <laughs> I gotta do things too. It's different. <laughs> it's okay, cool. so, okay, so, I want to ask you a question, but if if you don't want to answer, it's fine. Okay, cool. At what point do you learn that your sister might possibly possibly be in a wheelchair as well? When I got to rehab, when you got to rehab. When I got to rehab, 
uh, like they did my evaluation, you know, how they do when you get mm-hmm. there and they start telling you all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, I asked a lot of questions. I always a very curious person. Like I asked, asked, asked. So I kind of knew what was going on with my sister. Like I knew she had the trach. I knew uh, that she couldn't talk. I knew that she wasn't doing the best either. Like mm-hmm. um, when I was in rehab, there was a lot of like, um, what's the word? I think it's oh my God, desatting with my sister. Like she would go in and out of like consciousness, I guess, or like okay, like I guess like close to death mm-hmm. sometimes. Because she was, I don't even know how to explain. She'll be able to explain that better. Okay. <laughs> but I just remember just feeling so scared. And um, it wasn't until the the same PT, I love my, that, that PT. She's, we're still mm-hmm. friends to this day. She's so sweet. But um, I asked her. I said, I was sitting there. I started crying. And I was like, what's going on with my sister? Like, they're saying that she's really not doing good today. She's, like, doing really bad. Oh, I'm about to cry now. I'm talking about it. <laughs> and... Um, I just remember sitting on the mat, and she that's when she showed me um, You Walk, I Glide. She's a quadriplegic on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And um, she said, look at her stuff, um, mm-hmm. maybe to give you some hope. So I went back to my room. I looked. I was stalking her. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, okay. I learned what a quad was, and then I went to mm-hmm. research mode. <laughs> like, okay. what is – a quadriplegic what is this is xyz and then i started learning i didn't even know that i was called a paraplegic and all that like mm-hmm. i went down this whole i am i really like to maybe it's a teacher in me but i like to educate myself on things so mm-hmm. once she like gave me that instagram account and i had like some keywords from her account like the names yeah. of stuff the levels of stuff like you know mm-hmm. you read people's captions and you're like okay like what does that mean i started re- like googling like what does this mean yeah. what does this mean and I was like, okay, she's going to, like, she's going to be okay. I was a little scared because there was some Googling where, like, where people did go home with a trach and Mm -hmm. with her level. And I was, like, freaking myself out. But then I also would see, like, the the stories that they didn't go home like that. So I was just holding on to, like, she's going to be okay. And Mm -hmm. she's going to be, like, she's going to be okay. Because she didn't come to rehab until, like, I want to say like a two or a month, two weeks or a month after me. Okay. If not longer, probably longer. No, actually, maybe longer. Cause she was in ICU for a minute. You're right here. Tell me. <laughs> tell me how long you were in ICU. <laughs> but she was in. To, so it was like hard because even too, she was always just going back and yeah. forth with like, um, the like being really bad and then one day being like she's doing really good she's gonna come to rehab like two days she'll be here and then two days pass like actually no she's not doing the best she's not she's not coming today like oh my god so it was a lot of that again like the same they were doing with my Mm -hmm. mouth like back and forth and and then I'm trying to also like learn stuff but also like worried about my sister and she's Mm -hmm. in a whole other building than me so I can't even really like I probably saw her twice that okay, which now. was lucky i was able to get a pass to leave because of our situation okay so okay so that kind of answers the next question i had because i was going to ask you when you was going through therapy was you able to see her but you said you was able to see her like twice yeah um they saw how like down i was like about her being in another building mm-hmm. and stuff and it wasn't far like we went to the rehab hospital say like around the corner mm-hmm. from where we went. they worked together but like okay. I, the hospital and the rehab hospital so mm-hmm. it wasn't too far, but it's like, obviously, you know, I was still in a hospital chair. Yeah. I didn't know how to roll myself. They didn't know if they trusted, like, my my dad, like, rolling me over without hurting mm-hmm. me. He didn't yeah. even know if he trusted himself, to be honest, but he knew how important it was for me to, like, see my sister. Like, I just need to yeah. see her. And yeah. even seeing her sometimes is hard. I mean, I told people sometimes when I would go into, I mean, not sometimes, each time that I went to visit her, I said, everyone leave the room. And mm-hmm. she couldn't talk, but, like, her and I had, like, this language with each other, like, mm-hmm. well, there was one time we both just started crying together, and it was, like, we knew what we were saying to each other without even having to say it to each other, because she couldn't talk, okay. so, yeah. um, it was, like, like, we would just look at each other, at one point, even, she even asked me, like, why are my hands like this, and your eyes are like that, like, she, she, mm-hmm. she asked me, like, with her eyes, and, like, like, I knew she asked, and I was just, like, I couldn't tell her that she was gonna mm-hmm. be, like that forever i actually told her like maybe it's gonna get better 
but I already had done all my research. So I kind of knew that yeah. maybe she was going to be like that long term, mm -hmm. longer term than she might have wanted. But I couldn't, I don't know, I couldn't bring myself to tell her that, especially when she was laying there with all these tubes and still attached to everything. Yeah. And I was over at rehab and I was just like, I was able to tell her about rehab though, which I think made her more excited about coming to rehab. So mm -hmm. it was definitely like a unique experience. I probably went like two or three times to visit her, but not much because okay. it was a lot like it hurt. It was a lot of pain yeah. when they would, when my dad would have to roll me the three blocks to like go to the hospital because yeah. it was right next to each other, but you know, hospitals are big. So the entrances yeah. are all far. So yeah. that's understandable. Yeah. yeah. So I hope I answered your question. I feel like I went on a tangent. No. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Trust me. I, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Okay, now, how long did therapy last for you? I was in therapy when I was a kid. I was in therapy for probably two months. Let me, two months. Let me think. It was like, because I went in, yeah, two months. It was two probably months. Like a little over mm -hmm. two months, but two okay. months. Yeah. Now, was you able to learn, was you able to do, like, the little driving courses as far as, like, getting, like, certified on certain hand controls and stuff? No, I wasn't. Okay. I, I did that later on, like, okay. Uh, okay. after my, after I left rehab hospital. Mm -hmm. But they did have a program there. But I just, they had asked me, but I didn't even see driving. Like, I was, like, mm -hmm. I can move I, again I had the precautions so eight weeks and when I finally was able to move I was like still so weak so mm -hmm. I didn't I was like, how am I supposed to drive like it don't even make sense yeah like and then do I like I live in Chicago we I didn't have a car like mm -hmm. I always take public transportation <laughs> so yeah. I'm just like eh, driving is not the first thing on my list right now but mm -hmm. when I left hospital I was like shit I want to drive now <laughs> okay. okay now now All right, let me see. Let me see. I want to ask this. Um, yeah, you won't offend me. Anyway. Oh no! Oh no! 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 I'm just. I'm just trying to see how I wanna. How I wanna ask the question versus like what I just said. Um, <laughs> okay, now, how how much sooner do you leave the hospital than your sister? Um, she so I left in like late May, and she didn't okay. come home until. I think like a month, maybe a month and a half after me. Okay. But we were able to spend our birth our birthdays in June, and she was able to come home do like a test run at home. Okay. Which was nice to like. Okay. But I, after I left, I was able to visit her whenever I wanted. Like. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Okay. Now, once you left, did you do any therapy after that? Yeah. Then that's when I went to the day rehab. So it was literally okay. again, all the buildings were next to each other. So it was in the other building. So anytime I went there three times a week. Mm -hmm. So if we, I went there, then I'd usually go visit my sister. Okay. And I had a text, and I would usually tell them to leave. Mm -hmm. And then take the public transportation home. All my therapists that still knew me at that were at the rehab place always thought I was crazy. Like, how are you taking the train? Aren't you in pain? I was like, yeah, it's painful, but I want to see my sister. <laughs> that's dope. I want to hang out with her. Okay. And that's where I was able to, like, even learn, like, her care and mm -hmm. be able to learn her injury more. and. Okay. Like, I even like would get in her bed sometimes, rest a little. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so, she was in there for yeah a couple weeks, and even when she right. came to rehab, because she came, she probably came. I don't know how late after she came to me, but even when she came, she ended up going back to ICU. Okay. So, like I said, it was just a lot dealing with. I felt like mm -hmm. I was the okay one. And then, yeah. even though I wasn't still, but I was the okay one. And she mm -hmm. was, like, there was a lot, like, we were just nervous. Like, we'd be, I didn't know about paralysis. So I didn't know that that's yeah. what happens. Like, with the trach, like, you can't breathe sometimes. And X, Y, Z, we just thought, like, oh, my God, oh, my God, are we going to lose her today? Because this is going to be the day we lose her. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. Because I, I didn't know. Now, looking back, like, I probably wouldn't have stressed it as much if I knew what I know now. Yeah, it just, it just. Yeah. Like I said, like we're not aware of stuff like that, especially when it comes to I would say more intense because a SEI injury is one thing, but you know, not that many people are gonna know about a trach and you know what a trach entails unless you know you know somebody who's been in that situation. Or you're the one that's in the situation, so 
Okay. Yes. We had, we, okay, we now, did get like, we had a doctor in the family and he, mm-hmm. he was able to like describe some things. Yeah. But even so, it's like, you know, a lot of people don't really know about spinal cord injuries. We're like one in the few, like we come very rare. So mm-hmm. he knew about the trach and yeah. stuff like that. And he knew that it could be taken out at some point. So that gave mm-hmm. me a little bit of hope. Like, okay. But he also was being honest. Like she could also go home with that. Yeah. Like I'm just being realistic. And yeah, I did mm-hmm. see people at rehab hospital who were sent home with a trach and mm-hmm. the oxygen tank. And like that was going to be probably their life. And yeah. I was like, oh, like, I didn't know what to expect. Like, what was going to mm-hmm. be that with her? Okay. So it's crazy to think about. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Now, once you leave the hospital and go home, where do you go? Whose house you go to? So I came back to my parents' house. Okay. Um, I, I was living on in an apartment, but it was on the third floor. Mm-hmm. I wasn't going to go back there. Yeah. So I came back to my parents' house. My childhood home is where I grew up. Mm-hmm. When I and... Uh, they mm-hmm. had um, fixed my old room when I was a child, like back to a okay. room. So I was able okay. to just come back and uh, there was a lot of craziness. So like when I did come mm-hmm. home, there was like a lot of mess in the house and like, mm-hmm. you know, construction. I mean, even when I came home, I couldn't get into our shower. So yeah. I was still back to bed bath. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, and because the door was too small. Mm-hmm. Um like what else when i came home um my that's my dad had went back to work so that was kind of like a little shock for me because yeah. he was there a lot with, with with me at least in the hospital he was kind of yeah. my buddy my mom was my sisters so mm-hmm. it was like no don't go yeah but when i got home i really like was the de- i was determined to like learn how to do things like yeah i um had help like outside help and i was like Mm -hmm. don't go in my room i want to put on my own clothes like let me do that and it would take me like two hours because in re in rehab hospital i was able to practice that stuff but again Mm -hmm. i had so much precautions once i was able to finally do things we were kind of on rush mode like let's teach her to transfer let's teach her to do things so when she goes home she's at least somewhat independent yeah we were kind of like i learned how to transfer the slide board at rehab and i learned how to do my hair like they were just teaching me like these but they didn't teach me how to dress myself. They taught me mm-hmm. the way, but they were like, let's not waste, like, not waste, but like, let's not do OT with that because you can work on that when you get home. But if you know how to transfer yeah. and out of bed, then the dressing should come after that. Like, you can now work on that yourself. Yeah. So when I went home, that's when I started, like, practicing the, okay, let me see if I could dress myself. Mm-hmm. And it would take long. Like I, was, I mean, I was in, I'm still in so much pain, I feel like, from yeah. my accident. I probably will live with it for the rest of my life. Mm. But then I was in even worse pain. Like, yeah. And I, I had cut myself off of the, the pain, um, the yeah. pain medicines. Mm. I could just cold turkey it. My addiction runs in my family. And I was, I, I just, I, I was like, I feel like I'm getting kind of dependent on these things. And I told mm. the doctor, I don't know. And he was like, are you sure? I was like, I'm not sure, but I'm not going to take those no more. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was in a lot of pain, um, mm-hmm. stupid pain, like mm-hmm. so dumb and over here trying to roll myself in yeah. my bed to pull up my pants, crying mm-hmm. because I was in so much pain, but I yeah. did it. And one day it took 10 minutes and I started crying like, oh my gosh, I did that. <laughs> like I just dressed myself in 10 minutes, mm-hmm. like after going from like two, three hours to crying when I would be doing it, I was just mm. so happy when I was able to dress myself like fully Yeah. that fast or it mm. seemed fast to me. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know before I even tried to dress myself just to see people try to put on my shoes, it seemed like almost impossible, you know, and, you know, now looking back on it, you know, it's, you know, but, you know, this is after years of, you know, just doing it every day, you know. It's like it, second yeah, exactly. It comes to you easy now, but at the time, it, like, putting on a pair of shoes was just hard work for me. Like, I couldn't even put on a pair of shoes. Like, you know, like, I had to get help. And, like, just to see them struggle with that, I'm like, man, I ain't never going to be able to put on a pair of shoes. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's, like, it's it, it's crazy the things that you did at first. You know, it 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 took a lot out of you, you know, it took a lot of time, you know, you just, 
I feel like that's where I kind of learned patience. Mm-hmm. You it know? humbles you for sure. Yeah, oh, definitely. Like, definitely. Shit, like, you really, yeah. really, because like, I guess you never really think about how fast, like when you were able-bodied, how fast yeah. it was to pull up your pants. Like how you didn't even have to think about it, really. Yeah. Put, it, put it on and, your socks. You know, just... And now you're like, when you're putting on, you're thinking of every movement. Like, okay, I got to pick up my leg. Well, at least the way I do, I crossed it. I got to bend over. That's going to hurt. Like, you never think of that before when you were putting on some socks. Like, because you've been doing it your whole life almost, you know? So, you know, once you mm -hmm. lose that, it's just like, damn, you realize how easy it was for you before. Like, you didn't even have to think about it. But now you really think about, oh, I got to do all these movements in order to actually, you know, get this end result of my pants being on shoes being on like just everything you know yeah like if it like everything kind of feels like like it's like a step-by-step process in the morning for me you know because i pretty much do the, my morning the same um like like i might work out or something like that i haven't been working out lately but i'm about to get back into it though but you, you know, know all my story, you get back to it huh <laughs> you're watching your story you better get back to it i know right i know <laughs> I, I i need to i need to i've been getting too much weight so so yeah. Um okay now this is a question that I'm curious about because when I woke up, it just so happens that I was able to kind of like uh like all my stuff was all, always paid up in advance and stuff like that. So I was always up to date. So I was never really behind in anything. You know, but I had my stuff in a storage unit and if I would have waited a certain amount of time, then all my stuff would have really would have went to like the auction houses where like you see on TV and they auction off your, your stuff, you know? So I kind of want to ask you what happened to your apartment and everything, because you know, while you were in the hospital and everything, like, you know, nobody's probably really thinking about your apartment, you know, everything that you got going on at your house. So what happens with that? So I was wondering if you're going to ask this because I never really share this part of my story, but I'm okay, okay with sharing it. There's nobody ever access, so I don't say mm-hmm. it. But I had a boyfriend. Okay. So we lived together. Oh, okay. And, um, he wasn't around at all when I got injured much at all, and he made it very difficult for us to get our thing, my things back. Damn. Um, we actually ended up having to get like a police escort to finally mm-hmm. go get what was ours and the police didn't even want to do it until we explained the whole situation and survived like we had to share the whole story like Mm -hmm. even like my sister's injured too like it's just a lot we just need the stuff like i just need my stuff and and too like i not only like it wasn't even just about the clothes like i had a lot of i had important stuff there i lived there like important documents important like just things i'm like i can't just leave my stuff that i need my Mm -hmm. like if you can't get anything, I need at least those things. Like yeah. I need my important documents. I need, um, like I had some things, like I was a teacher. So I had some things that mm. I'm like, you know, you don't want other people to see that stuff. So I need yeah. all, I just need all my stuff. Like, all my stuff. Mm-hmm. like, and he made it very difficult to get all the things back, but we ended up getting it back. Um, but we didn't think about it until our accident happened in March. I didn't get myself back till August. Okay. Um, okay. Like now- we weren't thinking about it. I- have mm-hmm. a family member go grab some clothes yeah. um, with my key when I knew he was at work one time because he was being mm-hmm. difficult. So thank okay. you, she was able, and she was like savage, so she didn't care to go in and mm-hmm. care about the consequences. Okay, now, now, okay, okay, because I didn't know that part, obviously, but I'm guessing since he made you go through that much trouble, I'm guessing y'all was probably like. I'm guessing y'all was kind of like, like on the edge of things, like before yet, before your incident. Yeah, like it was definitely okay. probably gonna end. He wasn't the best, the best dude. Okay. And okay. it was definitely probably gonna end. The accident okay. definitely ended that up. Um, actually, at the like, part towards the end, oh, the dog's trying to get in the camera. At towards the end of the, um, like before my accident, mm-hmm. we were probably more just like roommates. Yeah. Um, okay. Like it's understandable. Yeah, we were probably just more like roommates than like in a relationship. But you know, when you get hurt, you just think someone's gonna be there. He had a situation once where he was in the hospital and I was there for him, like left and right. Like, probably overdid my part. And I don't know, I guess I felt like, oh, he might do that for me, even though we went through we're going through something. Maybe mm-hmm. just put that aside for a little bit. But yeah. he didn't. Did he ever come see you? 
he came once like late at night and i was like sleeping he didn't really come much though um he didn't really come at all to me honest. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. um but i had asked him sometimes but i just don't think he really wanted to and um his personality and it was just mm-hmm. it was weird because at the time it was like a lot of people thought like my family thought i was sad about it and i was yeah. Even just thinking back, like talking about it right now, it's like I don't even feel like I thought much of it because I was like going through, like I was like my sister was hurt, I was hurt, mm-hmm. I was just, and then too like the, the guy wa- walking away from the accident, we had police coming in our room asking us questions all the time, mm-hmm. so it was like that I wasn't even thinking about, <laughs> like I was kind of like I was mad at it, but I guess I never like I don't know, it didn't hit me until mm-hmm. August, and I was like. Okay, your stuff I'm back. back. I'm gonna mm-hmm. message him. And let's get this. Let's get this done. Let's get this done with, so we can all move on with our lives. Like, okay. And yeah, so that was kind of that situation. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you didn't really come, but uh, oh, that's. I feel like that happens a lot with people. Like, I had a lot of people who I thought were my friends who never came yeah. to visit me in the hospital, mm-hmm. and. I mean, it's like really shocking when that stuff kind of stuff happens to you because you're like, mm-hmm. you expect certain people to come and yeah. then people that you don't expect that are like coming to visit you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're like, okay, okay. I mean, I even lost like my my best friend at the time. So I felt like I was going through a lot of breakups like okay. <laughs> at that time of life. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, now, do breakups. you think, okay, now I'm really not going to get too much into this because it's kind of personal and it really don't have anything to do with that, do with the incident. But I'm just kind of curious. Do you think that, do you think that these breakups were going on? Not, not the breakup with your boyfriend, but the breakups were like your friends and stuff like that. And them not coming to see you. Do you think that that was because of the whole accident and everything going on with the whole legal stuff? No, I think I had a lot of bad people around me to be honest. Okay. I don't, Okay. Um, like I said, I was a partier and I just think I didn't have okay. meaningful relationships. I definitely feel like mm-hmm. now my relationships are more intentional and like mm-hmm. um yeah like i don't really have many friends now to be honest and before mm-hmm. i could probably wouldn't be able to like put them in my home yeah. like and now i feel like i can count like three and some are including mm-hmm. my cousins like i'm counting cousins in that but they're cousin <laughs> yeah. friends you know mm-hmm. and i just feel like it's more meaningful and like i yeah. like appreciate them more yep. and i appreciate what they that I appreciate the people who care to learn about this. Like a lot of people don't know about mm-hmm. disabilities and like, I notice like people in my life who I actually generally try to learn mm-hmm. and actually generally care. I mean, mm-hmm. I've had, I mean, even after my accident, I've had people make fun of me that I post on social media about my injury and my accident that I overshare and stuff. And I'm like, I'm not doing mm-hmm. it for that. I'm doing it because this is what I wanted to see online. Like yeah. I stalked people like you like mm-hmm. online and I liked seeing that. I was like, I like yeah. seeing this. So I was like, if I like it, I'm going to do it too. Like, this is what mm-hmm. I'm going to do. It fuels okay. me. It makes me feel good. And I've had people be like, oh, you're sharing too much. Are you doing too much? Why do you share that about your mental health? Like, I'm like, mm-hmm. if you don't care to, I was like, you don't have to share it. No one's telling you to share. I'm yeah. sharing that, but you don't have to be yeah. like hater vibes about it. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I'm not what? doing it for sharing because people relate. Mm-hmm. You're right. <laughs> You right, and I yeah. feel like that. I feel like that that they only really hate because they wouldn't. If they was in the same situation, they probably wouldn't be strong enough to do it. You know, and I feel like that that's why they hate on it. You know, and mm-hmm. honestly, when it comes to this, I don't think anything is really. I don't really think anything is that bad to share because. That one thing that you share could be that one thing that helps somebody out, you know? So, you know, like you said, people aren't aware and most of the time you aren't aware of it until you, until you have a spinal cord injury. So, so, you know, like I tell people all the time, I did not want to do these types of videos. I did not want to do videos of me in my wheelchair because like I told you, I, like I was a weed tuber at first. You know, so I I used to make like little, like little funny skit videos. Like I used to have fun. I used to just. I, to be honest, now looking back on it, I was real positive with it, like real positive with it. But at the same time, when you kind of think about it, I'm kind of a bad role model because, you know, so many people that, you know, yes, I feel like I got popular in that space, but it was so many people that I feel like, yo, yo, 
I started smoking because of you, or I smoked my first backwood because of you. And like, you know, I feel like I had to mature a little bit to kind of realize that maybe I just wasn't the best role model, you know, as far as, you know, like, like I'm wearing my merch right now. This is my merch from back in the day. Okay. So, nice. so, so like, I mean, I felt some type of way, but I felt some type of way with YouTube deleted my channel in 2017. But at the end of the day, I was like, you know what? If I'm going to do this, I can't let just that one little thing stop me. I got to keep going. I had a little backup channel that only had 4,000 subs on it. And Cassandra was telling me to start sharing stuff about my life. And, you know, it was j- it just so happens that I had finally came out and told my subscribers my story about how I got paralyzed. They knew I was paralyzed, but a lot of them really didn't believe me because I was sitting down at the studio so i really didn't have to stand up or anything but oh. they didn't believe me but once i came out with the video it was like they wanted to know more and my channel got deleted around that time so i just decided to you know start sharing my life and honestly it worked out for the best truly tv hit us up which is barcroft you know it was it was kind of like i spoke it i spoke it into existence because i reached out to them like a week before and they never got my email because the email never sent but i didn't know that the email never sent off just like how it <laughs> happened today it never sent off, but they ended up hitting me up a week later, and it was, you know, it was, it was crazy. So that is crazy. That's like full circle moment, right? Right. There. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And you know, a lot of things I feel like really do come back full circle. Like, you know, it, it just, it, I don't know, it just kind of shows you how small the world is sometimes. I feel you know, like because, full circle because I, you were one of the first, like literally, like I'm not even capping. You were one of the first people. <laughs> You and like mm-hmm. the walk there girl that I say, the first people that I saw like mm-hmm. doing stuff in chairs and like I followed mm-hmm. you guys and I was like, okay, cool, cool. Like, you know, I was mm-hmm. all interested, like doing my little stocking yeah. and I saw you had like, we're in a relationship and I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. like, are we still living life? And yeah. I was like, I found your YouTube channel mm-hmm. and I was like, okay, like this is like possible. Like mm-hmm. I was really like bugging, like right now just talking to you like face to face virtually. I'm like, shit, mm-hmm. like. If it wasn't for finding like people like you on social media, yeah. I wouldn't have even thought I could drive, like, mm-hmm. or thought I could have like work out at home because yeah. I always thought you had to go to a gym. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's just like little stupid stuff like that, and you see other mm-hmm. people doing it and it pushes you to do it. And now I'm like, wow! Now I'm talking to him about my journey. Right? Come back. That's, you know what? It's it's crazy because at the same time of me doing those videos, like I tell, I try to tell everybody, like, like I said, I knew we had, I knew we had viewers, but I didn't know we had people really watching, you know. And to for people to tell me, bro, like you, you, you know, you really helped me get my bio care situation together. You helped me get, you know, my my sexual life back on track like just to hear like little stuff like that it's just like damn i didn't know that somebody was watching this to actually get information from you know yeah. i just thought it was just youtube viewers you know so i mean i would like rewatch videos of yours just to be like okay mm-hmm. like, see it sometimes you pick up different things when you watch it a second yeah. third time and mm-hmm. i would like, okay and you can even spot like maybe an able-bodied person wouldn't notice but i would see how you move your body and i, I was would gonna say like, that oh i could do that like mm-hmm. even maybe the, to like the regular eye they wouldn't notice those things but i would yeah. notice it like oh like look how he just picked up his his leg right there like i can do that mm-hmm. yeah. let me try it out <laughs> yeah and you want to know what i believe that as as a paraplegic or somebody in the wheelchair i believe you do st- when you look at somebody's like video or something or you see them do something you kind of study it to see okay i do it like this you know maybe i could try to do it like that you know like it looked like that was a little easy for him like how he did that it's a little hard for me so let me go ahead and try it like that like that way you know so it's like you kind of pick up on the movements and what they do and it's like sometimes you can feel their pain at the same time too you know because you know what they're going through in order to do that movement or to do that transfer, to do, you know, whatever, you know, you might be doing or I might be doing, like, you you kind of, you understand the struggle a little bit better, you know? So it's like you kind of study it, so. Mm-hmm. Okay, now, now before your incident, did you ever have any hopes or dreams about being a YouTuber? Um, Actually, no. Um, no. The only really, like, like, I liked social media. I always mm-hmm. have. Like, I think it's really cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I was more just, like, on Snapchat. Like, that was kind of, like, yeah. where I posted stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but not really anywhere else. Mm-hmm. And 
after we got and i always thought my sister and i stories like hella unique like what are the odds that two twin sisters get injured yes. and someone told us we should write a book you should it could be a movie <laughs> i am not a writer <laughs> ashley is the writer so i would do a youtube channel <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i was like maybe we'll start it and i started with myself but now it's mm. ashley and i's channel mm. what's the name of it ashley and nikki okay and what do y'all do on there we we vlog a lot. We've been vlogging okay. a lot recently. Mm-hmm. We do vlogs. We show like how tos. Like I just did a video. Like my two most recent videos is a vlog, and we also mm-hmm. show how I help her. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people want to see how I help her and how she helps me yeah. and how we help each other out. Which mm-hmm. I guess I never like. We just do it, so I never yeah. thought it was interesting. Oh, yeah. vlog again. And <laughs> oh no, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> never thought it was interesting and. Even the video that we just recently posted, it was a vlog more so, but we did show, mm-hmm. I was like, let's just put in this transfer and see how like, mm-hmm. and people are liking it. They're like, wow, we've been wanting to see, like yeah. I get DMs all the time on Instagram. Like, can you show us how you and Ashley transfer? But also it's like, it'd be mm-hmm. the morning time. We'd be doing a lot of stuff. Yeah. Sometimes it's like, I don't even want to, but we were at someone else's yeah. house. So mm-hmm. we were able to like, it wasn't our regular setup in like our home yeah. life. And mm-hmm. We were able to show like how I help her transfer okay. and people are like, it's so good, but it didn't always start good. I mean, we had a lot of, mm. a lot of throwing her in the bed <laughs> at yeah. times. And it's a lot of trial and error, you know, it's that, a lot of trial and error. But we were blessed that in PT, they showed, show, I asked them to show mm. me how to help transfer. And this was when she was weak, like okay, way weaker. And now she, she does most of it on her own. I just kind of manage mm-hmm. her but. But people wanted to see that. And I want to get okay. a better angle, but we need someone else to record because every time I put the camera down, something's blocked. <laughs> like you can't. Yeah, see. yeah. But in yeah. the video, you're not, you're not, how it happens. Yeah, no, I definitely understand because I feel like that, you know, when you are a YouTuber slash like, you know, like blogger, you know, I feel like that it's so beneficial, but you really, it's hard. It's hard to be in a position in order to get some hire somebody who could be your photographer. So, you know, it's hard, you know, but I'm telling you like that, just, you need somebody filming, you know, yeah. and, you know, and then at the, and then at the same time, you can only hold it back so far, you know, mm-hmm. as far as like your arm leans, you know, and then, then you got to push yourself. Yeah. So it's not like the best, yeah, it's not like the best circumstances. So, but no, I definitely understand because, when it came to me doing like little videos where it was like, it was just my everyday things. Like you don't really think about it, but that's what people need help with. You know, yeah. just that, those little basic things that you really don't think about. Just, just a transfer into the car. Like mm-hmm. something that you probably do every day, you know, just a transfer into the bed, something that you do every day, every morning, multiple times a day. It's stuff that people need to see in I wouldn't say unfortunately, but unfortunately, people want to see it, you know? Yeah. So, you yeah, know, so I, I... even noticed that on my Instagram. Those are usually, like, like when I had first got injured, I was so hyped when I transferred in the car by myself. So yeah. I posted it, and I noticed those mm-hmm. people videos that, like, everyone, yeah. like, like, wow, that's amazing. And I'm like, it's really not that amazing. Like, it was amazing to me, mm-hmm. but it's like, like, I've been working towards this. Like, you mm-hmm. saw the product but i've been yep. putting work to get here mm-hmm. and that's what i tell people all the time you know a lot of people think that you know they go on my instagram and they go on my youtube and they think that it started here when no it's this is 10 years in this year i would be 10 years in like mm-hmm. yes so it's just you gotta party it up exactly exactly because <laughs> it, it could it could have been 10 years since i've been dead all right and that's mm-hmm. i feel like you know, a lot of people ask me how am I able to smile so much, and I, I don't really think about it. I guess because I just do it. But you know, I told somebody today, YouTube was became my support system outside of my family. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you know, I started doing it, and you know, I, I would I would tell people, yeah, I'm paralyzed, and people would want to know, you know, like just certain things, and like you know, I built I I built up a following, you know, and those are the people that really became my support system, and. YouTube was one of them things that really just it helped me get my life back on track, you know, outside, outside of my family and my wife and, and, you know, just my, my, my general, my, 
my immediate support system, like this, like YouTube became my extended support system. You know, it became my extended family. You know what I mean? So yeah, it was, yeah. So it was, it was, you know, and you know, like the weed thing, it brought me around so many good people. I was able to meet so many, you, you know, people and work with so many different companies. And even, even when it came to YouTube, I was able to meet so many different people, so many YouTubers, YouTubers that lived where I lived at, you know, YouTubers that had, you know, a mass, have a massive following, you know, and those are the people that, you know, I gain inspiration from. So it's like, I'm seeing it, I'm seeing it firsthand what, you know, what you could do from, you know, putting in hard work on YouTube, you know, and awesome. yes. I want to get popping like you want me. Well, okay. Yeah, it's possible. It's possible. Cause trust me, I've been in your position. All right. I've been, trust me, I've been there multiple times. Okay. So, you know, I, I like, I lost, I lost my weed channel and I went and did something completely, totally different, which was like with my wife, like couple stuff. So none of my following came over because at the same time, my channel got deleted like overnight. So I wasn't really able to tell my fans like, Oh, go to this channel right here. And I wasn't really building up my Instagram at the time. So I really didn't have the biggest Instagram. I think only had like 4,000 uh followers on instagram but i had like sixty six thousand on youtube and like yeah they just deleted overnight so it was just like just deleted yeah so everything all like 200 videos like it was it was it, look, if being paralyzed wasn't a humbling experience that was another humbling experience <laughs> <laughs> so but i was like you know what if that's the if that's the goal you know then i can't let that little bump in the road stop me just like being in a wheelchair Look, I still got to live my life. And that's why I try to tell people every, you know, all the time, you know, because a lot of people are, you know, they get down. And it's understandable because I've been there. But your life does not end after your SCI injury. It's just, it's just different. You know, it's it's literally a whole new journey. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, you know, it's exactly. And it's up to you to, you know, really get back on track and, you know, do things, you know. So you can only feel down about yourself for so long to the point where you get curious. I mean, I want to drive, you know, but I got to get in the car, you know, but then, but you know, get in the car, you got to do a transfer, you know? Mm -hmm. So all the little things that you learn in PT and OT and therapy, you know, at at first you don't want to do it, but once you do it and you realize how much it actually helps you in your everyday life, you're that much more appreciative of PT and OT. And you're like, damn, like it was hard at the time, but it was so beneficial. It's so beneficial to my quality of life right now. So there's a reason for this because I mean, exactly. I I feel like the before my accident was starting to work out set me up for after because mm-hmm. I did get lazy when I came home. Yeah, like mm-hmm. I got super lazy, and then I was like, no, like just like before, you need to work mm-hmm. out results. Like you're not gonna see results if you don't put in the yeah. work. But even just like for me, what helps a lot too is just like watching people like you all mm-hmm. like maybe that doesn't help everyone but for me it does so i noticed if i went days without looking at a video of someone yeah. like me mm-hmm. i'd feel down on myself like oh you're never gonna do this mm-hmm. i'm like no, 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 go watch one of those videos snap out of it and remember that it's possible yeah and do your workouts and do what you got to do like even just mm-hmm. working on your mental health and your physical like mm-hmm. i had the physical down but sometimes i would be like go into this like dark like funk plays like i'm never gonna be able to do anything i'm never gonna do this this is gonna be my life for the rest of my life staying Mm -hmm. at home being like this not doing shit and then i was like it helps me like i watch a video of someone with a spinal cord injury like every day maybe twice three times a day Mm -hmm. because it that's it is what motivates me and i feel like you have to find what motivates you and just keep doing it Mm -hmm. in the background yeah like trust me it's it's definitely understandable. Like, cause mm-hmm. trust me, I can relate. I can relate. All right. And trust me, I'm telling you, it's gonna get to a point where, you know, you realize that your YouTube channel and your and your subscribers, like they're gonna become your support system too. You know, yeah. if if they if they aren't already, yeah, I'm about to say, look, if they aren't already, and you know, because my sister don't really have much like mm-hmm. support. And it's really just yeah. like my dad and maybe a couple other people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, you know what but you know trust me like it's crazy that you said that because you know today today uh i, I forgot what was said between me and my wife but i told her i know coming out saying you know what sometimes you got to support yourself 
Sometimes you are your support system, you know? So even if it, even if you got multiple channels, you got to go to every single channel, go like your video, to, you know, to, you know, like get your likes up. Like you got to like support Instagram pictures. But- exactly. You know, but you should, I like my own Instagram pictures who don't look, I put it out there cause I like it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? So there's nothing wrong with supporting yourself and trust mm-hmm. me, when you support yourself and you really put in that work, the people are gonna see that and they're gonna come. You know, I'm I'm telling you, like they're gonna come. It's just it takes a little time. That's it. All right. It's it's a process. You know, for some of us it happens overnight and you know, you blow up and you get a massive following, but you know, it's not like that for everybody. It's not like that for everybody. You know, sometimes it's it's a journey. All right, it takes years, all right. But you know, for the people I see that's really dedicated and you know. They keep doing it. You know, you ain't got to always be consistent because, you know, we all we all had those slumps or the, you know, that time where it's, nah, I don't feel like doing it. You know, ain't nobody going to watch it. You I know, it, 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 it happens. Because I was getting, I was in a funk on my own. Um, mm-hmm. And I took some month off. I was like, I was so focused on Instagram, but I know you yeah. take a break. Like, it's hard, you have to show up for yourself before you show up for other people. Exactly. So I was like, exactly. I'm taking a break. And that's when I worked on driving and, mm-hmm doing this stuff for myself and I was able to come back and have more content. <laughs> you know what? And sometimes you sometimes you have to take a break. All right? Sometimes you got cuz look, like we took a break for almost a year. I came back and then I started doing these types of videos. So, you know, sometimes we all need to take a break to just reevaluate things. That's it. Mm-hmm. You know, and you know, hopefully you can come back better than before and with more content, <laughs> you know? <laughs> exactly because it's helpful but but you know like you said before you know like the little things of what people really need help with all right like you know like just like transfer like you know like you helping out your sister like somebody needs to see that you know so like it's somebody out there that's that's wondering that's questioning it that's questioning it and needs that the information because when i started youtube there wasn't really any information like that you know, but it was on me to find it, you know, and I found it through a guy named Paralyzed Living, who's still on YouTube. He's still doing YouTube to this day, you know, but that's how I find out a lot of things when it came to, I would say being a man, being a man in a wheelchair, you know, and his 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 YouTube channel really helped me out. It, uh, I learned out about a standing frame. I learned out about, you know, some TMI stuff, you know, just, you know, just stuff, just little things, you know. Exactly, but those are the things that you're curious about. You know, it's little things like that. So, trust me, you keep on with this YouTube journey, and they're gonna come. They're gonna come. Now, what do you feel like? What do you feel like that you was getting all the hate about when it came to you putting whatever you was putting out on social media? What What do you feel like that they hated the most on? That I was sharing my life. I've gotten a lot of comments like I share too much, and it's more mm. cause, like from family, and I wouldn't call them friends anymore. But you know that I share too much and yeah. and it's funny because I never felt like I shared too much I literally okay. shared like even just before I got on this call with you I was on a call with a girl who's newly injured for about two hours mm-hmm. just, she I let her ask her she was asking me any question she wanted mm-hmm. and I was just giving her information yeah and that wouldn't have been she wouldn't have ever found me if I wouldn't have posted on social media mm-hmm. like and I know that like I don't really like I mean we're in a we were in a pandemic yeah. That's like when I really got <laughs> to start mm-hmm. to like post even more, mm-hmm. but like we're not gonna find people like us, especially like Chicago. There would be snow and you don't see wheelchair users out and about. And mm-hmm. she was legit wondering that, like, what do you do? And I yeah. was able to tell her, mm-hmm. like, this is what I do in the city, and I enjoy. I actually enjoy doing stuff like that. Like, does it pay? Yeah. No, but it makes me feel good. Like, I got the phone with her. Mm-hmm. She was like, I don't know. So I feel like. I started Instagram to share our story, me and my sister's mm-hmm. story. That's I was actually the one who made our joint Instagram page too. Okay. And um, I was the one who made the YouTube. I'm the one behind the, behind the whole YouTube. Okay. I don't mess with that stuff. She just shows up. <laughs> <laughs> She'll tell you that too. <laughs> and um, she uh, like people find us. Like I see people. Mm-hmm. I see people. I'll see someone comment, and I'll be mm-hmm. like, "Here, message me on here." And, you know, I like to get the vipers before I give them my number. Like, mm-hmm. you know, just because we're in wheelchairs, don't mean we trust everybody, you know. <laughs> <Not> <laughs> and um, I felt like I forget, I probably not. I lost the question. What was the question? 
well, 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 I, well, it was, what did people feel like that you shared too oh, much yeah, on? Like, um, just like my life, like times it would be mm-hmm. like, um, I've gotten comments about me complaining about my mental health. I'm like, I'm not complaining. Do you know how many people message me after I write that? Like, shit, yeah. I relate to that so hard. Mm-hmm. And because some, I, I mean, I sometimes when I post those things feel like that, but I have to tell mm-hmm. myself I'm not posting it to be complaining. I'm not posting it to be mm-hmm. a victim. I'm posting it because someone out there relates. And I remember how alone I felt in those first few months. Like, mm-hmm. I'm thankful that I snapped out of it. Yeah. But not everyone does. You're right. And I wanted to be that person that shows them. Like, I was just in a funk for the last two weeks. I'm just getting back on, like, my stuff. Like, trying mm-hmm. to get back. I haven't worked out. Mm-hmm. But I share that because someone out there can relate. Someone probably mm-hmm. is going longer than two weeks. Yeah. And letting this be their whole life. And I just want them to know that they're not alone. Mm-hmm. Because finding, like, social media people, like, fa- family on social media, like, the supporters on social media, have made me not feel so alone. But... Yeah. You have to be real. Not everybody shares those things and, and understandable, but I'm, I'm mm-hmm. fine with being the person that does. Like mm-hmm. I'm fine with sharing about my mental health. I'm fine sharing about my accidents. I'm fine sharing about mm-hmm. these things. I understand not everyone wants to do that, but yeah. like I'm fine with being that person because people, I mean, I get DMs. I, mean, I don't have a huge following on Instagram, but I get DMs every single day yeah. about someone who can like relate. They, they mm-hmm. understand it or they, they're like, well, I'm, thanks for sharing that because I felt so alone. Mm -hmm. i'm like thank you like that's all that's all the only reason i do it and at first it was to share our journey me and my sister's story and Mm -hmm. all that but then it became i was like shit like someone out there needs to hear this like yep so and i'm it's a teacher in me too like i do love i know i like to teach and i like to educate people Mm -hmm. so it's also it also feels that side of me too like the passionate the passion of teaching people things Mm -hmm. and Okay. Teaching them, and I look. I was actually going to delete my Instagram when I got injured and make a new one, but mm. I told myself everyone needs to see this. Every, like yeah, people from high school need to see this. Mm-hmm. People that I worked with, and if they want to unfollow, mm-hmm. that's cool. But if they want to stay, I hope that yeah. they learn something. Mm-hmm. Like you know, because you know, I would, I would also because not that I don't, I don't really watch so many wheelchair YouTubers, but. The ones that I have came across, they've all been guys. So, not I wouldn't say that the knowledge really isn't out there, but you know, I, you need to put that stuff out because it's it's not as plentiful, all right, as it, as it, as it might be for guys in wheelchairs. Because I don't know, like I spoke to, I I had an interview with, um, with another woman who. I just really didn't know anything. Like, like she didn't know anything. Like, she didn't know how we capped. I didn't know how they, how y'all capped. You know, so I like it was like she she asked me some questions. So then I asked her the, some questions, and it just I just I just didn't know. I just didn't know because everybody that I saw that was in witches were, were guys, and it's like I only really ever got that point of view. But to get a little insight on, you know, and my wife was curious as well. So you know, it it, it just I just never really saw anybody as far as a woman that was in a wheelchair that was also doing YouTube. So, mm-hmm. you know. The words when I was first injured out my mouth. Mm-hmm. I was like, that's legit what I was thinking. I'm like, there's not many women showing. Yeah. I mean, there's women showing their cute outfits and stuff. And that's great. Yeah. And everyone, you know, we do mm-hmm. that too. But there's not many women showing like the reality of mm-hmm. us living as a woman with a spinal cord injury. I mean, yeah. even on the phone today, she asked me about the period. Like, you don't mm-hmm. see people talking about that, and then it gave me an idea, like YouTube video, like maybe I should talk about that. Like, exactly, like I said, it's just the little things that you don't think mm-hmm. about because, yes, somebody like her, she needs the information, but then there are other women out there that's curious about it. There's other people who's curious about it, and that's what I had to learn. Is one is people that are just genuinely curious. They got nothing to do with a spinal cord injury. They just curious, and they're they just love YouTube. You know, so and, and you know, but they could probably relate to who you are as a person, you know. And then you have the people that really need the information, like the young lady. Like anybody that asks me anything in the DMs or anything, I try to tell them, like, okay, this is your chance right here. Like, you know, you got my attention. Like, ask what you need to ask, and don't feel embarrassed, you know, because I, you know, I like I can't respond back to everybody, you know, but I I try to respond back to to. To, to mostly everybody Especially if they really ask it And they need help about something And I feel like that You gotta kind of put your pride And your ego aside 
to really get that information that you really need because I was somebody who did not have the information because one, I wasn't looking for it, but two, I didn't speak to anybody that was in wheelchairs. My uncle would reach out. I just, I, I, I didn't talk to him and then he ended up passing away. So it's just, I really didn't know anybody or really only got the information that I learned in the hospital, but I wasn't even really listening in. I was just trying to do enough to get out. So I know what it could do to somebody who doesn't have the information. You know, so I, I just try to tell them, look, it don't matter what it is. Like, you need to know what you need to do for bowel care, but ask me. Like, if you don't know, let me know instead of, you know, like hinting at it or beating around the bush. Because sometimes I'm not going to get everything. Like, I might not catch, mm -hmm. you know, the, the drift that you're throwing out. Like, hey, like, you might be asking for help in a certain area, but I'm not picking out, you know, I'm not picking up on what you're giving off because I'm thinking that, oh, are you good in that area? You know, so I just try to tell people, like, you know, don't feel ashamed. Just ask the information. Just we just ask because, like we like sometimes we need that help. You know, I, when I first got injured, I was messaging people left and right. Like I had no like savage mm -hmm. girl in the DMs, and I got some people who just read it and not respond, which was fine. Like mm -hmm. I, I expected that. I was like, not everyone's gonna want to answer these questions that I have. Like, yeah, not everyone's gonna answer them. But then when I got further out of my injury, I was like, I'll be that person to answer them. Mm -hmm. now because i was in people's dms like crazy i mean i got responses too but yeah i was like asking all the questions like hey can mm -hmm. you answer this, this, this xyz and mm -hmm. i feel like we need that information and when you brought up information yeah. in rehab one thing that i did for anyone newly injured watching this mm -hmm. keep all your paperwork and put it in a binder i put all my papers in a binder because you will look back at it later right mm -hmm. in the moment it doesn't look real but if anyone newly injured is watching this podcast just keep it because I've looked back at that binder that I made mm -hmm. and I didn't know why I was making it in the moment. I, again, I think it was a teacher in me, like keep all the information, but I really do believe like we do forget all that information when we're in mm -hmm. the hospital it goes in one year and out the other. And then when you get yeah. home, you're like, Wait, what did they say in that seminar about mm -hmm. child care? And I was able to go back into like yeah. my notes. I made them print it and I put it in a binder. Didn't know why I was making the damn binder, but <laughs> It came in handy. I still have it to this day. I call it my little educational final mm. reminder. Mm. And you wanna know what? You know what too? I've been thinking, like I've been feeling like that people need like a like a little not a template, but maybe like a little checklist on like things, you know, because I don't feel like you get too much of a checklist. Like you like I feel like you do the checklist in therapy as far as like, all right, they know this is what you need to do to to be able to go. But as far as like, you know, I, 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 just like a daily checklist of what you do, I feel like people in witches, once they go home, they need a checklist like that. Mm -hmm. You know, all right, this is what I do. This is how long it generally takes me, you know, so, so you, so, so, so you can really get on a schedule. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like before then, the only schedule people are really on is, you know, their work schedule, school schedule, you know, but we, but when it comes to a spinal cord injury, there's a bowel care schedule, a calving schedule. It's, you know, it's, it's all types of schedules. You know, you got to plan around certain times, you know, so it's just, you know, there's a checklist that needs to be out there. And, and look, I ain't gonna lie, that little binder that you, that you did that. I like that. I like that idea. I made one for Ashley too, and she didn't know why. Now that's that dope. was going to be good for you. Okay. Okay. I, I really do believe like, we need to, you just gotta educate mm -hmm. yourself. Like all of, even just mm -hmm. people who meet when you meet people, like just educate yourself on yeah. their life, like or the I'm like just I like to research people. I love hearing people's stories. Like yeah, and I love like the education behind the spinal cord injuries. There's a lot to learn. Mm -hmm. We're all know, too. It really yes, <laughs> yes, and you know yes. Like I was talking to my dad about this yesterday. Most of the time, the outcome is the same. The wheelchair, all right. But how we got there isn't all right. Mm -hmm. all, mostly every story is different. Every yeah, it's not always gonna be the same. Yeah, we might have the same le level, but how we got paralyzed was, is not the same, you know. And is everybody's story is unique. Everybody's story is different. Everybody's pain is different. It's you know, but me doing these videos is very eye opening to see just like the amount of like like let me see. I like I don't know the perception that you get off of me on Instagram, but I don't really hang out with too many people. And I think funny, huh? You, you're funny. You make me oh. laugh. <laughs> okay. I feel like we'll be friends. Okay. Okay. <laughs> like, I guess, let me see. I totally, <laughs> when you said I was <laughs> funny. All right. All right. Um, well, well, I was saying because I don't really talk to too many people, right? Like, I try to, like, like I try to, like, say to myself, like, I got a real small circle, 
You know what I mean? And just me doing these videos, I feel like I've talked to, like, I told Cassandra the other day, I've talked to more people in the past two and a half, three weeks than I have in the past five years. You yeah. know, like, yeah, like, it's, like, I don't really, like, I'm not really, like, a big, like, like I told you, the only time I'll write back somebody is if they was asking me information, like, on how to, you know, do stuff, but I didn't really talk to too many people. I really don't talk to too many people. Like, I, like, everything I do, I do, I've always done it by myself, I, everything, you know, like, like, when it came into, you know, like, went to the military, I had to do everything by myself, you know, and that's how I always went through life, because I felt like we, we moved so much that I was always a new kid. So I was always having to fight. I was always having to defend myself. I was always having to do stuff because I was always having to kind of make a name for myself. So everything I ever did was it was kind of like by myself. Yeah, I had friends, but at the end of the day, I felt like I was always by myself. So that's kind of like how I still do it to this day. So, um, which is not a good thing. Well, which is not, it's not a bad thing, but then at the same time, it's not a good thing too because you get into your head sometimes, you know, right. especially... Yeah, you know, you hit that the right indica, the right sativa. You know what I mean? It will have you. It will have you out there. You know. So, all right. So I'm gonna keep you. Your 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 circle meaningful because like exactly. I always had my sister, so like I feel like mm -hmm. I didn't really like have much friends until she moved away, and I blah blah mm -hmm. blah. But like, yeah, it's nice to be like more to yourself. Like me and my sisters stick to ourselves a lot nowadays, mm -hmm. just because. One is people are nosy. And, exactly. Um, but it feels good, like, to just do your own thing. And, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm in women's support groups and stuff, like, with okay. people with spinal cord injuries. Okay. But you know, I feel like that's, that's more like, common for know. women, though. Mm-hmm. It is. Like, There's yeah, a lot like, of them. Yeah, so, like, guys, we're mm -hmm. more, like, standoffish, ego thing, you know, so it's not really that, like, we ain't in a text group. Like, I talked to a, I talked to a woman the other day, she said that she's in a group where it's, like, 50 people in the group. I'm like, damn, we, we ain't got nothing like that. The guys ain't got nothing like that, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, are you in a big group or I'm not, no? I'm in, a, like, I'm in, like, a Facebook group of all women with spinal cord injuries, but, like, my group, my support group that's, like, through Zoom. Mm -hmm. it's like 10 girls okay it's actually awesome. all based in california what that's crazy i got lucky to meet huh? the girls from california <laughs> okay okay so uh like i said i ain't gonna keep you too much longer but there's something i'm curious about it's a couple things i'm curious about that i'm pretty sure that the people are, uh, are curious about it as well all right now everybody's story is different you know my story is different as well so i want to ask you how have you had a job since your injury? Um, no. Actually, I was working on it going back right before the pandemic. And then literally mm -hmm. a week after we had all okay. the paperwork in, we were ready to go. Mm -hmm. Just called, like, maybe we should hold off. I said, maybe. Okay. And I'm happy we did because then I would have had to go through that whole process of, like, collecting unemployment and all this. And mm -hmm. I was just able to, like, stay on my SSI and deal with that. Mm -hmm. So it was like a blessing that it happened like that. I feel like, you know, whoever was looking out for me, mm -hmm. so I wouldn't have done all that work. Um, yeah. But now I am my sister's um, caregiver. Okay. That's mm -hmm. dope. So I guess it is, it is a job. It's amazing. Like, I can't yeah. do it. I can clock in. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I, don't, okay. I don't clock in like all the time. Sometimes I just do it. But mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and you want to, I was going to ask that question because you said, and I really, I didn't. I felt like it would have been kind of rude if I would have asked, "Are you your sister's caregiver?" No, I feel like, open book. yeah, no, rude. yeah, no, no, like, okay, like, yeah, you might, you might be okay with answering it, but I didn't feel okay with asking it, so I didn't okay. ask it. But yeah, but so, so you came out and said it, and now, now that I think about what you said before, you said that somebody that somebody seen you do a transfer of your of you helping your sister transfer into bed, you know, and. I was getting those caregiver vibes when you said that, but I, like I said, I didn't want to ask it, you know, and that, but now that I officially understand that you're her caregiver, people want to see that people need, there's a lot of people in your situation that are curious, like that, that need to see that, you know, the information isn't out there, you know, and, yeah, and I, like, it, yeah. I feel like it, it's like a form of working out too, when we and her yeah. help each other, because mm -hmm can't do as much like i can't do as much as like yeah. an able-bodied caregiver would do i'll yeah. be honest like there are things mm -hmm. where i say no 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 we're not hurting ourselves by doing that mm -hmm. like let's ask someone 
Or yeah. let's get help. Like, I don't help her shower because okay. I don't want to hurt her and I don't want to hurt myself. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just not the setup isn't. I feel like if there was a right setup, maybe. But like, there's certain okay. things where her and I will talk and be like, that's mm-hmm. that's not. Um, let's that we don't feel comfortable. We might hurt mm-hmm. ourselves. But I do a yeah. lot, like okay. more than I don't do for mm-hmm. sure. Like, yeah. um, and. Yeah, and but I also feel mm. like it's made her stronger. Like a lot of people say, she don't even look like a quad sometimes, <laughs> because mm. I mean I've we've worked on dressing, we've worked on yeah. um the, like she had to do the transfers herself. Like there was a point where I was pushing her and stuff, but then I came mm. to a point where I was like, we gotta we gotta both do it. Like let's do less helping each other and let's see yeah. if we can do it. And now I help with her legs. So it's like it's interesting because I mean I don't know if you've ever had to deal with caregivers, but that whole world. Mm-hmm sucks like yeah it's not fun and like to watch my sister had to deal with that and i mean she had one person she has multiple people who just don't show up like just didn't show up and what? for me as a sister i'm not gonna make my sister stay in bed all day like okay yeah like so of course i'm gonna be like let's see if we can do this mm-hmm. i mean there was a time she was getting up like with no pants on like mm-hmm. it is what it is <laughs> because yeah. i was like i didn't know if i could do that then i realized like wait we can like mm-hmm. I won't hurt you. Like, let's see. Yeah. Like, it was a lot of trial and error. I mean, I've been, it was, we've been mm. in like this for three years and I've, I learned how to help her in rehab, like the transfer mm-hmm. in rehab. And I mean, okay. she, it sucked when we first mm-hmm. did it. Even the therapist was like, don't do this at home. I'm like, but we have to. Yeah. If the care person doesn't show up, we have to do this. I'm not, she's not going to mm-hmm. stay in bed. Yeah. Like, we like to do things to me, my sister. So, mm-hmm. um, I, I'm sure you like, you and um your wife like to do things together and some if you were mm. to have a caregiver you'd be like i don't want to always deal with a caregiver person mm. and like their time schedule we like the fact that we're able to like do things us too yeah. on our own time on our mm-hmm. own you don't have to call anyone or be like oh they have to come in and clock in so yeah now we have to like push our what we want to do back yeah we like the freedom of that exactly. for sure too. it's hard it's sometimes i get overwhelmed mm. i won't lie but because like i do my own care too so it's, yeah it's like some some days i feel like i'm doing disabled stuff all day yeah and i get in my head but mm-hmm. also like in the long run it works out and me and my sister come up with things to make sure mm-hmm. that we both have like the best day possible like yeah. we do we've recently been doing like this pound each other's fist and we say mm-hmm. something we're grateful for right in the morning like okay just to be, just so we could both be in a good headspace, because she knows I get overwhelmed mm-hmm. and she gets overwhelmed, or sometimes yeah. we both get frustrated because it didn't look exactly how it was supposed to, or yeah. shit that could have been worse than it was. But mm-hmm. yeah, okay. we do little things like that, and I took things too. She's my best friend, so yeah, <laughs> definitely help each other. I mean, we've even had people who were friends help us out, and then like mm-hmm. just not show up anymore. And I, I, yeah. I do believe it's like people see how permanent this is. Mm-hmm. And they don't want to be around it. I'm just yeah. fine, whatever. Like, okay. I mean, I always say, just let go, let God, let go, and let God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, 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 do you and your sister live by yourself? No. So it's um. This is my parent. My childhood home is the okay. house, and so it's my mom and my okay. dad. Okay. Live with I trust. Us. My dogs. I, I I know how it is having your parents around because when I first got into my accident and everything like i had to move back with my parents and trust me i understand how beneficial it is to have your dad around to have your mom around just to have somebody hey Juan, can you go pick can you grab that for me you know you know so it's understandable so yeah okay. it's our, our mom our mom is not really the most helpful but our dad definitely okay. is he's he's dived he's learned a lot of the stuff and he watches yeah. like the things mm-hmm. that we do on social media and i'd be wondering how like what's your name on there and he won't tell mm-hmm. me but I know he's watching and he like cares and he's mm-hmm. very like loving, loving okay. man and like Just he's so. helped so much. Like yeah. I mean, he used to carry Ashley, but before he he hurt his back, so mm-hmm. he hasn't been able to. Okay. But yeah. like he's again, like he's like him and I take turns cooking dinner a lot of times. <laughs> okay, um, we're both the cooks in the house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like he helps me, I help okay. him, and like we both try. Like even when he had to go to therapy, it was like the tables mm-hmm. were turned. I was driving him. <laughs> okay yeah that's okay yeah my dad he heard his back too so i definitely yeah. understand yeah it's kind of crazy seeing i 
thinking like what would I do if like my parents wouldn't be around anymore because I do love mm-hmm. the home that we're in it's a nice big house like me and my sister are on the first floor and they're upstairs mm-hmm. so it's like we do have like our little own space and our yeah. own thing but um it's nice just having him there and he works from home like you probably hear him whistling but <laughs> he works from home now and it's nice okay. to always, like always have him here even just for like like we don't really like bother him while he's working, mm-hmm. but even just to be like, "Hey, Dad, we're leaving. Can you close the door behind us?" <laughs> like yeah. makes it a little easier. It does. <laughs> yeah. it does. Or like today for lunch, he's like, "You guys want me to make a grilled cheese?" I said no, but in some days I say yes. Like it's just nice to yeah, him there. It is. Like, um, just my understanding. I love my dad. He's yeah. He's an angel. <laughs> <laughs> trust me, trust me. I could, I, 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 I could definitely relate. I could definitely relate. <laughs> not yeah. well, well, not the daddy's girl, but I can trust me. I can relate. I relate. I relate because my dad was my caregiver at first. You know, at first my dad was my caregiver, so my dad was the one that helped me out. That really took me to all my appointments, and you know, now that I look back on it, he was he was he was always there. You know, he stopped working at the time. You know, but eventually all these people do have to go back to work. Uh, you know, like they literally have to get their lives back on track. You know, and you know now looking back on it, like my dad was really there for me. Like, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, so shout to pops, shout mm-hmm. to your pops too. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, um, <laughs> just in the last couple of questions, what what job was you going? Uh, uh, what job was you thinking about going back to go do? Because you said you was about to go start working again, but you stopped. What was that job? Was you going back bartending? Um, no, I was in preschool. Oh, preschool. preschool. Class. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, hey, look, you can still do it because I spoke to a young lady who the video dropped today. She's a teacher. I'll watch it after this. Yeah, look, she, she, she's a teacher right now. And she's been paralyzed. I think she's been paralyzed three years, but she was in college at the time. She was in college at the time. I think she was home from break. And she, and she ended up getting paralyzed in a car accident. And... um. Six look six months six months after that she was already back in school and everything and now mm-hmm. now she teach yeah now she she teaches um I believe she, she teach all grade levels so she she pretty much helps helps the people get back to like like up to par so like if they're not really up okay. to par yeah uh, like she helps them out she says she helps up all the way to like like grade nine so well that's so, all I love. Yeah. I- I definitely would love to go back. I love kids. I mean, I still ba- I babysit time from time now. Okay. So I'll make some extra cash, you know. Okay. <laughs> because I do love love it. Like, when I visited my kids, like, kids just don't mm. care about the paralysis. Like, yeah. they did it. They were like, Miss Nicole, Miss Nicole, you're back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was just like, oh, my heart. Mm. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, now, now uh, do you have anything that you're working on? Like, what you working on? Like, what you got going on? Like, let us know. What do I have going on? Mm-hmm. Me and, my, me and my sister's YouTube channel. Okay. Shout out the name again. Um, Ashley and Nikki. Okay. Um, I'm pretty sure you just look it up. You can find it. I'll link it down below. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we got our YouTube channel that we started back up a few months ago. So okay. getting back into the swing of doing mm-hmm. YouTube. I also love to create Instagram content. Okay. Um, I'm trying to get into reels. I'm, I'm not tech savvy. <clears throat> Okay. But I like social media. <laughs> mm-hmm. you, I, I'm the same way. I'm not tech savvy, but I like social media. Like a lot of times, I ask my wife, "Look, how do you do this? How do you do that?" I, I like I don't know anything. I just know how to kind of do the reels. That's it. But you, but start watching them. If, if you start watching them, you're gonna get curious. Then you're gonna want to do a reel. Then then you you're gonna see what it takes to do the reel. You know, to bring yeah. it to life. And you know, at the same time. There's a struggle behind that as well, especially being a paraplegic, somebody in a wheelchair. There's a struggle just creating content. It's not as yeah, it's not as easy. Exactly where where to put the phone, like the best angle. Like you know, you're not always gonna get the best angle. So trust me, it's a it, it's a struggle that people don't see as well. All right. Yes. All and right. I'm also trying to get back. I'm trying to get I'm not back on get on TikTok. Okay. Um, I've been scrolling and it's funny and I like it. Mm-hmm. But. Again, it's just the technology, like, figuring okay. it out. Um, I'm also in a leadership program. That's nothing, okay. like, public or anything, but it's mm-hmm. hopefully, like, once it's done, it's a year-long program, so hopefully once it's done, I'll have even more, like, information to share with people because I've already okay. – I've only had three classes, and I've already learned so many things that I didn't even know about for people with spinal cord injuries. It's a leadership yeah. gr- group for people with spinal cord injuries, mm-hmm. and we they, they're basically, like, teaching us to be leaders, teaching us things that – 
people don't know about and it's since mm-hmm. it was after all the panorama and stuff it's people from all over it's not yeah. just chicago it's ba- it's a based a chicago based company that's how i mm-hmm. heard about it but it's not just people from chicago which i think is really cool and mm-hmm. even then just met cool people and like i love networking yeah with people so that's kind that's of that's awesome i'm trying to think oh and me and my sister are planning a road trip just us two. Ooh, okay where y'all going? Where y'all going? Where y'all going? Let us know about this we're road trip. Short. We're definitely going to Cali in July. All right. Be- let us know. Yes, we will be there um, for a okay. week. Um, the details aren't sorted out yet, but we already know the date, so I can let you know that. Okay. Um, it's really ex- really excited for that. I've never been, so I'm excited. Okay. Um, we're going to drive. So to be okay. my... I've done road trips before. That's how my family always traveled, but mm-hmm. it's going to be interesting to do both of us and i'm hoping we'll be able to vlog it and mm-hmm. share with people how it is because i also don't really see that much like people you see the plane and stuff you don't really see people road yeah. tripping so yeah i want to share that how we do things on the road how everything mm-hmm. goes so that's that's something that not working on we are we are mm-hmm. going to be doing <laughs> but I and guess you know what <laughs> that's one thing that i tried to show too but sometimes it just sometimes it when it comes to being in a wheelchair, it just gets so hectic when it, you know, going through the airport, you know, grabbing your bag, got like somebody got to go run back and forth. My wife got to go grab this, go grab that. Like, oh, my bag got flagged. You know what I mean? Just, it's just, right. it's so much stuff that, you know, it, it makes it kind of like a burden to kind of feel. And like, she gets frustrated and then I get frustrated and then it just doesn't come out like that. But you're right. That's something that people really need to see because not only is, are people curious about it, the information People need that. People need to see what is what yeah. it takes to what it takes to go on a road trip and mm-hmm. be in a wheelchair. You know, so and we, me and my sister went to Louisiana in November. Yeah. Okay, um, but it was with our dad. Okay, so like we had that help, and people loved that mm-hmm. content on Instagram. Like okay. I was sharing every day. I saved it on a highlight, so if anyone wants to see mm-hmm. it, they can go see it. But mm-hmm. I just talked about how I cast on the road and all that. Mm-hmm. So. I want to do it in a more like video like platform though, like YouTube. Mm-hmm. But that was like a test run. <laughs> okay. All right then. Look, so, look, we look forward mm-hmm. to seeing it. Like I said, I'll link your YouTube down there below. You know, it's amazing to see. It's amazing to see how far you've come so fast. Because I know three three years three years out from my injury, like I I was I, I was going through it. I was still going through it. Like you said, people. Some people don't ever get out of that you know and some people it just takes a little bit longer than others like for me it took a while it took it, it took a while it took a, and, it, it, and i wouldn't say it took a while for me to accept it i guess i guess it, it just took a while for me to accept myself like like i like i was okay with it because i was like it's just i don't know like you know still to this day i have a problem posting up pictures of me in my wheelchair it's, it's it, you know it's hard but sometimes you just gotta do it hmm you wouldn't even guess it with yeah. how you post. And it's, that's funny. It's like inside you you are. Mm-hmm. And that's what I like that you shared that because mm-hmm. you would never guess that from if you looked at your social media. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, because like, to be yeah. honest, if you really go through my feed, I don't really post that much as far as posts, but I do post on my story, you know, but you don't really get yeah. to see me in a wheelchair. You, you're just seeing from this point of view pretty much, you know, but, you know, I still have a problem with posting the pictures in you know, it's understandable. People are going to go through it. Like, you're going to go through it like, ah, like, you ain't get the best angle right there, babe. Like, you know what I mean? Like, nah, I don't like that. You know what I mean? Oh, my shirt is up right here. You know? Like, yeah. look, we all go through it. All right? So, mm-hmm. like, I try to tell people, you know, just because you see me on YouTube or whatever, like, it doesn't mean I don't go through what you go through. Go through pretty much almost exactly what you go through. You know? You know, We're some things are different. Me. Exactly. We're all human. We all go through stuff. We all go through relationship stuff. We all go through, you know, stuff with this SCI injury. Like everybody, nobody's perfect, you know. Mm-hmm. So just know it's it's somebody out there that's going through what you're going through. Somebody out there that's that has it better than you, and it's also somebody out there that has it worse than you. All right. And like I just try to tell people, I'm 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 grateful for m- my level of injury, you know, mm-hmm. and you know, and mm-hmm. like. I'm just grateful. I'm just grateful. I mean, I look at my sister and it makes me like, yeah, 
damn. I mean, me and her talk about it all the time. Like, what what would we have done if we were both quads? And that's kind of I didn't want to say it. That's why I took that pause right there because, unfor like I I, I, don't, I hate to say unfortunate, but you get to see it firsthand. Mm-hmm. You know, like you you get to see somebody with a different level of injury than you firsthand. I don't. Like it just I only like like it, and if I do it's on social media or something, you know. But you get to see it firsthand, you know. Mm-hmm. But look, it's a beautiful thing that you're your sister's caregiver. I'm like an honorary quad member, squad quad member, okay. quad squad member, whatever they be calling themselves. I'm okay. <laughs> okay. Well, well, look, like I said, it's a beautiful thing to see that you're your sister's caregiver. It's very, it's definitely inspirational. All right, mm-hmm. and you know, like the information as far as women with SCIs, like it needs to get out there. You know, like I said, it's not plentiful. It's out there, but it's not plentiful. And mm-hmm. I feel like that you and your sister are definitely, you know, two individuals that I can see pioneering it and bringing it out there, sharing it to the world because people need to see it. All right. Mm-hmm. I, I appreciate you coming on my podcast. Like, um, you know, because it, it, it's still fairly new. So not everybody wants to do it, but I appreciate you wanting to come on. And, you know, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I love this podcast. You're doing 